Welcome back to another episode of the Trash Talk Podcast. This is the first episode without Sergey of 2020. Yes. Oh, yeah, you, you, you're, you're yeah. doing stats like the yeah. NFL does it now. Yeah, and like I'm the, doing like the yeah. analysis in NFL. <laughs> exactly. Like, like, oh, yeah, this yeah. is the first second half touchdown <laughs> where the Patriots yeah. were not leading yeah, exactly. uh, in the regular season yeah. since, like, last yeah. year. The like, first yeah. the first time that a, a fullback caught an exactly 34-yard touchdown pass in the wild card game from a quarterback who went to Baylor sort of situation. Yeah. Like, the, the NFL does that a lot. That's true. That, um, that's what that sounded like. <laughs> uh, that That is correct. Uh, but it is it is a fact though. So um, we have some topics, and uh, one of them still pertains to what we've been doing the last couple of weeks, uh, which is our music evaluation, our ratings list. Yes, as a matter of fact, it pertains specifically mm-hmm. uh, to that list, among others. JJ did some calculations. Yes. Um. So those of you who've been watching the podcast for a while probably have noticed that I like mm-hmm. using in- inverse point scoring systems. Uh, f- for those lists, yeah. I used it uh on the top ten songs released. 2019 list to say like which was like who between Volbeat and Sabaton according yeah. to that list specifically was better uh, in that year and so I went about and I knew we had the top 10 songs that we added to our collections in 2018 list we obviously had the top 25 2019 yeah. list and we had a top 10 of all time that was created in June 2018 yes um, which pretty much more or less covers the time before which so, now seems really really old already it is pretty old. But I took all of those lists and I did the inverse point scoring thing, like 25 points to the number one songs and so on and so forth. Yeah. It goes up till 16 points for number 10. And then, of course, number 11 for 25 we only had in the most recent list. Um, obviously, the exact way you distribute the points affects a little bit yeah. how those are scored. That's just what I ended up with. It seemed like the fairest one without trying to overjust anything. And then I evaluated whom the two of us had individually as, like, the highest ranked yeah. artists. And I also didn't, like, in my head, did add up some of those for the totals. I did not write them all down for the combined list, but uh, we can yeah. get yeah, at that we, a little bit yeah. later. Now, keep in mind, this is not, like, the the absolute, clear, definite list that includes everything. Because, no. because this model basically assumes that like the difference between every song is equal. Yeah, also you if, have s- yeah. stuff like, um, oh, like a song that would have been my number 11 song of all time yeah. as of June 2018 gets zero points because exactly. it was a top 10 list. Exactly. Meanwhile, my number 25 song that of I added this only year, uh, the last year specifically yeah. gets a point, yeah. right? So that, that's true. Obviously, dubious. It's by no means fair. What we would have to do is we'd have to go through our entire music library, order them all, rank every single song, and then do the inverse point scoring thing. Um, so yeah, this is by no means anything that's hugely statistically relevant, but I think there's some interesting points we take oh, and like sure. some surprises here and there. And I just thought it was interesting to for talk sure. about and also to in that process see a little bit how like our tastes and music collections develop yeah, over time. Definitely. We will do that. And obviously, since I know the results and you don't, I, don't. I think it will be kind of interesting yeah, for you some, to like, yeah. guess along the way a Drop some bit. questions. All right. What do you, what do you, th- uh, what do you, what do you think? So I was thinking we go through the lists, uh, yeah. both individual lists. Like and, lists being mine and yours? Yes. Okay. And we kind of, you kind of guess along the way, like, which is number one, which is number two, mm-hmm. so on and so forth, as they come up, kind of. All right. Which, of course, brings up the question, first of all, um... I wrote down mine first, so we're going to go with mm-hmm. that order. Uh, what do you think was my number one band by total points? By those three lists. Those three lists, 25 points for number one song, so on and so forth, and then inverse points scored. What is the number one artist? And if you want, you can even guess how many points. Hmm. Well, points is tough. Uh, exact but, points uh, is I, tough. I think because of the uh, because the, the 25 uh, rank list is just going to count towards a lot. It, it just might be either like Volby or Sabaton. It might be one of the big ones. So I'm just going to say it's Volby. It is Volby. Yeah, that's what I thought. It is Volby with, just want to guess, ballpark how many points? 75. 73. That's pretty close. That's actually. pretty close. That's pretty close. Um, that's so a lot of points. That's a lot of points. Yeah, a lot of points. Um, of course, literally every single point there is being gained from that one list. Yeah. Uh, just because they had a lot of high scoring songs, including the number two song there, um, which for me was still counting. How about the uh, the top ten? Uh, uh, did you not? U- or did you not use that? The top ten released of twenty nineteen. 
I didn't use that oh, one. Oh, you didn't use that one, okay. Because so. that seemed unfair. Because you got doubles and stuff. Because, first of all, some songs appear twice, just yeah. straight up. And second of all, how many points should I give those so that the so- the, the eight songs that didn't even make the top 25 yeah. released this year yeah. still got counted? That just seemed Yeah, off. fair enough. That, that's true. That's I, I was thinking about better. it at first. I was like, oh, I'll just score the uh, this one with like 10 points for the number yeah. one and like just a regular inverse point. It's like, no, that's dumb. No. Because they, they are... Obviously, part of the top 25 yes. released Fair this year. I, I agree with that. We should um, keep this, by the way, going over the years as we do more of those end of year ones and just uh, and s- uh, scrape those up over time because it'll get more interesting. Though I have a projection, a prediction. I think that uh, every year is going to look pretty much completely different. Um, because usually the way that it goes is if you discover an artist and you like a couple mm-hmm. of songs, like you'll eat it up, right? Like by the end of that year. Uh, there's not much more to discover, less for new albums to be re- released yeah. by that artist. Like for right now, I've probably heard every Sabaton and Volbeat song in existence, and until new ones come out, I'm unlikely to add new ones to my playlist. Sabaton has, has a lot of songs, so, yeah. but yeah, but um, I've also listened to hundreds. Yeah, so that's kind of the thing. Of course, again, that's why I, I, I've been saying before, like these lists are not designed with this in mind, yeah. and the calculation there is not fair at all. Correct. Um, it's more like with the <clears throat> the older sort of bands where you they're established and you know them, but you weren't around for the music releases. Like for example, yeah. like, say Beatles or something, uh, Kenny Loggins, whatever. Where like every now and again you just stumble over a song that yes. you happen to like that you haven't heard before because it didn't scour the albums. So I guess your guess for my number two on this list would be Sabaton, based on what you earlier said. Where you guess number one would be either one of those two. I suppose though it might just because of the the. I'm not sure, but I'm, you might have had two Rolling Stones song up there, so my Rolling Stones might be on the list too, because there might be one in the top top ten all time also. Well, my number two, believe it or not, uh, according to this calculation, is Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Oh, going back to the top ten all time. Because the top ten all time had yeah. two Bon Jovi songs, yeah. and because I like technicalities too much, I have John Bon Jovi with yeah, um, that counts. I have them listed separately. So you have, have oh you have them listed separately that's stupid so actually. So <laughs> I have Bon Jovi with forty seven yeah. points. If we include the John Bon Jovi song that I have yeah. somewhere in here, uh, that's way down the list. Of course, it's just a single glory, song. Yeah. It's Place of Glory. Yes. Uh, then there would be slightly more points, but it would still be number two. It would it would have like sixty yeah. some points. It wouldn't change the positioning. It should be included. But... Um, I, we have a similar thing for you later where it matters more. But All right. uh, my number three would then actually be uh, a tie, because ties happen here a lot. Um, because in this case, it, it's not as obvious uh, for the tie, but like once you get to less than 25 points, like it, it's just going to be like, this person had a single number mm-hmm. two song, this person had a single number yeah. two song, they both have 24 exactly. points. In this case, there's a tie with 45 points, 45 points. between... Sabaton and the Stones and the Rolling Stones. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, th- I saw those uh, up pretty high. And then is already when the list starts getting a lot less interesting. Almost like at f- now we have a number five with thirty points, the Beatles, mm-hmm. um, which was Hey Jude. Yeah, was on the one list. A uh, Hard Day's Night was on one list, and I think it might have already been it. Like I think I think that's just the Beatles. Because uh, they having were Beatles, right, this, yeah. having Beatles that far up is actually pretty impressive for uh, for those three lists, 2018, 2019. And then you know, then it's where it completely starts breaking down the system you because just get individual because ones. the sample size is too small. Yeah. You have number six, Nick Kershaw with twenty five points Ooh. because Promises Promises was my number one song. Oh, right, right, of right. Uh, twenty eighteen. Right, it was. So so, there, so there's the outliers. That's 25 points. Where, where is Hammerfall in all this chaos? Uh, Hammerfall is tied for 12th with Fiddler's Green with 22 points each. Because you just never rank their songs, right? You just always One like, each. You just, Fiddler's Green and Hammerfall. Yeah. You just l- kind of like them, but you didn't have barely any of them really Well, high. I mean, uh, let's see, 22 points. That means they got a number four spot mm-hmm. uh, with, I believe at the time it was... Um, what? Just one number four spot? Yeah. Right. Just single number four spot. Uh... It was something from the Threshold album. A uh, Natural High, that's what it was. Mm. Um, and then, you know, we got, like, tied for 7th is uh, Kaiser Chiefs and Mike Oldfield mm. with 24. Um, tied for ninth in a three-way tie, The Connells, David Bowie, and T-Rex with 23. Oh, boy. Just individual songs. Each of them having 
I, I think that's... I think it's all... I think the, all of the remaining list is basically individual songs. What's the T-Rex song? Children of the Revolution. When did you have that? Uh, top 25 of all... Uh, tw- top 25 of 2019. Oh, okay. Uh, and it was ranked, well, I mean, third. That's one of those that you neglected to put into the music share un- un- until the new year came around. Yes. Um, That's pretty good. And then we had the Hammerfall Fiddler's Green Tie. Then we have a definitive number 14 with Razor Light having 21 oh points. Oh boy, because of America. Yeah. Oh, in here. And then we have a, like, we have a tie for 15, which is uh, Phantom Planet and Pink Floyd. <laughs> uh, because of California specifically and what's the other like is it money or something uh, Julia Dream Julia Dream okay um, then we have oh yeah there it is the tie for 17 John Bon Jovi Robbie Williams and Neil Young right. all with one song all with 19 points with yeah. one song each yeah yeah. Uh, I can guess all those songs too a three way tie for 20th as well uh, with 18 points each being um, actually these group kind of nicely Billy Talent Kiss and the Foo Fighters. Where do they group nicely? It's it's all similar music styles, just similar-ish. Um, it's just some some of those seem very out there when you have like Phantom Planet and Pink Floyd. It's like yeah. you know those seem very different the, caliber sort do of. Do they? I don't know. Um, More different than like those three you mentioned. I don't know. I think you might just be t- seeing t- stuff t- in the letter soup. Uh, tied for twenty-two, Uriah Heep and the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Yeah. Uh, tied for 24, Black Sabbath and Greta Van Fleet. Uh, and then, then we start getting into less than 16 point territory, right. which so means that's, that... So that's only the ones that were... It's basically just me running list, down yeah. the remaining ones from the top 25 mm-hmm. list, which is... Uh, the exact in, order. In order from best to worst, yeah. in this case, The Kings, Eagles, The Who, Theory of a Dead Man, Iron mm-hmm. Maiden, Madonna, Super Tramp, the- Bob Dylan, <laughs> Billy Joel. All right. Bob Dylan being solo is actually feels like criminal. Like actually having like having a list where Bob Dylan is under Madonna is like basically invalidates the, the whole procedure. The thing that happened here, and I noticed that Bob Dylan and Billy Joel were very low, right? Yeah. And Billy Joel too, right? I didn't even notice. Billy Joel that. is the last is the, the last one. He's he's Mr. Ellen. It should man. be like inverted. But here's Because he's like the goat. Here's the thing, right? Bob Dylan, I had uh I, I said it in the video, I, I rewatched it because I had to grab the list yeah. from there. Uh that my number, I, th- I think it was all t- uh, the all-time list, too, yeah. where my number 11 song, if we had gone that far, would have been The Times They Are Changing. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Then he would have had 19 points. Then he would have been in there again. And yeah. he would have been um, on the tie for number 17, yeah. right? But Still criminal. Actually. I mean, yeah, but like that's just because he ever so barely slipped out the list yeah. and I didn't get a single one in 2018... And then I only got one song in 2019. Sort of, sort of when it gets, like, it started pretty early, but, like, the top five, and after that, it's just statistical nonsense. Because the, yeah. the sample size is too small, and we had, for that, we'd have to rank all the ones. You wanted to, me to guess what, the specific thing. What was that again? Before we started, you said that. Oh, yeah. Um, I wanted you to guess uh, the... I mean, I, I still have your list to go through first, yeah. in theory, but I wanted you to guess the number two if you combine the points, because you're never going to get them. Between both of us. Between both of us, yeah. The number two. Yes. So... Uh, since you, because you told me it was like, I would never guess it or something. I, I don't think you would. Um, it's gotta be something crazy, so. It's not gonna be like Volbeat or Sabaton, right? Volbeat like is that. number one. That's why. On okay. both lists. On of, your list, yeah. guess how many points I got for you, actually. The, the exact same as you, 73? No, 92. What? That's pretty good. Because you got like one or two more songs of Volbeat on oh, your right. top 25 yeah. list. Yeah, yeah. And you had, all, you almost always had it like one or two places higher than me as That's well true. when they were shortly after Ooh. one another. Hope it's baller, but the for us combined. I mean, it's not if if you know your list is not that surprising. It's probably like some band that only one of or one artist that only one of us had, but like a lot, which skews the numbers maybe because that would be surprising. It's, it's one that um, was on my list, but not very high, and it's on your list very high. Uh, it's like they might be giants or something. No, they they weren't on my list, but they are your number two with seventy five points. Right. I thought you might have had like Road Movie to Berlin somewhere in like your... no, um, it is. Your number three artist, actually. <laughs> I'm already kind of revealing your list. Three, okay, let me, give it, let me guess. My number three is Billy Joel. It should be Billy Joel, because like I had Billy Joel as my number one artist on both yearlies. That That's like 50 points on Billy the Billy Joel right? is your number four artist oh, okay. with 59 points total. 59. So I had I had Leningrad as one in 2018. I had Down East Relax on number one 2019. And then I had, what, Vienna somewhere? Vienna somewhere in the lower yeah. uh, right. parts of the other list, yes. Yeah, I didn't have and I have two points for Billy, uh, for Billy Joel for mm-hmm. also Vienna. Uh, so we get 61 yeah. total points. However, 
Was with 61 funny. points just from you, huh. there is uh, very, very curious, another artist. Very that... curious. I'm trying to. I'm, I, I kind of want to get this. It's not Billy Joel. And this Artists is also on one of the ones that is, at least in part, coming from it's other not, lists. It's not Sabaton, right? No. That's coming from what? From multiple lists. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's because, nice. uh, also, by the way, for me, Sabaton, of course, had an entry could in the it, could, it be, could it be like Mike Oldfield, maybe? Yes. Oh, that's, oh, that's interesting. That's neat. Because I had those like two back-to-back ones on yeah. the recent one. That you had really Mike Oldfield, 61 points for you. Mm-hmm. He had 24 points for me, because I had two friends at number two. Yeah. Two had two friends. And did you have Shadow on the Wall somewhere? Uh, No. Okay. Right, yeah, the high the higher rankings are really making it. So Damn. With you I believe you also had two friends, and then you had the two high ranking ones, and I had yeah. two friends. Which That's huge. All co- co- uh combined together, of course, Volbeat with like a grand total of like hundred and sixty five oh, points is like by far oh, leading. Boy. And then we got Mike Oldfield with like eighty five points. Yeah. And then I believe wow. the next one is they might be Giants for seventy five, mm-hmm. which is your number two, just because mm-hmm. you had so many of them. Yeah. And then, you know, we get, start getting into, like, uh, I think that is Sabaton? I'm not even sure. Sabaton had 45 from me, had to be expected. 36 from me. Actually, that's, uh, yeah, that's right right under... Uh, Where's Bon Jovi, no, actually, anyway? that's right under Mike Oldfield. Is it, is it like, did, did Bon Jovi make top 10? Uh, you have 25 uh, points for Bon Jovi, mm-hmm. which puts him at your number 6. Right. I had 47, which adds up to uh, 72, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike Oldfield had 80, um, 85. Yeah. Billy Joel had only 61. They might be just at 75. Okay. So, that that's kind of like okay, the top yeah. fair stuff. Enough, fair enough. Uh, Sabaton has 36 for you as, as your number 5. Mm-hmm. Bon Jovi is your number 6. Uh, the 36 from Sabaton plus my 45 from Sabaton yeah. gives them 81 points, which actually makes them number 3. Yeah. So it's like deserved though. I expect. And then number, number four is they might be giants, and then number five, yeah. I believe. Mike Oldfield is like the uh, because of the higher rankings, sort of the outlier mm-hmm. that just shot in there. But I had Volby Sabaton up there all the way. And then Expectedly. also like so I I kind of went through your top six, mm-hmm. and then we also get like the stuff with individual. I mean even Bon Jovi for you that was just one number one placement I believe with the 21, 25 points you put. Yeah. Uh, all time I believe was it's my uh, life. it's my life. yeah. yeah. Uh, and then. It kind of keeps going like that. Number number seven is Scott McKenzie. Oh. With 24 yeah. points for San Francisco. Yeah. Number eight is a tie. It is, is a through by tie between, like, the most random things, you know? It's okay. Deep Blue Something. Oh, boy. <laughs> Surfer Blood. Surfer <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and Charlie and the Boys. Wow. <laughs> That's the lineup right there. And this is, again, like, this is so skewed because both, like, two of those bands made, like, one great song and the other one make like 20 good ones. It's, uh, that's, but see, that's how that... They all got their points from a single yeah. number three ranking, but it's like Breakfast at Tiffany's but still then, and the, whatever yeah. the Surfer Blood song was. And Flowing then, vibes. Yeah. yeah, still then. It's like, <laughs> like and, <laughs> and then, then you got like, the, the boys like full them. playlist. <laughs> Damn. But yeah. because only one of the songs made yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so basically, like, the, the key for this system is like, make like an awesome song. Just like a few. Two or three. Like, absolute insane. The thing that stood out to me, of course, is Volby just by far topping both of our lists. Yeah, that that, that doesn't surprise me. Though, again, because we, we horked through all the albums. It's a little bit skewed because it's yeah. all 2019 yeah. stuff. Except for three songs for me. But um, it still seems yeah. interesting. That, that, um, is, that is true. And then, you know, just to go for complete in the sake, uh, tied for 11th, Don McLean, The Blair's Brigade. Mm-hmm. Tied for 13, uh, Queen's Clearwater Revival and Ozzy Osbourne. Jeez, you are so far down. Uh, yes, and that's where the other uh, tie for twenty first. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, no, I'm dropping head. John Fogerty and Fisher Z. Yeah. Where's so, my Where's my boy? Wait, wait. John belongs to CCR, or was it like so if we his, count his those, past, like post CCR career? It, it was center field. Uh, okay, fair enough. Uh, if we count those together, where's Bob Dylan? Then they would get thirty eight points mm-hmm. and be at number six. Yeah. In this case, in this case, I probably wouldn't count. Would not count them together. So yeah, that's. The one thing that could be affected here. Uh, so I was just going over 13. Mm-hmm. Uh, I jumped to 21st just to point out John, uh, John Fogarty. Mm-hmm. Uh, 15 is a tie between Coolio and Michael Jackson. <laughs> wow. So, Re- representing. Yeah. That's great. Um, so that's interesting. So my, my, my top rapper is only 15 also. Wow. Uh, no, uh, number 17 is a tie between Runrig and The Seekers. Mm-hmm. Old school. Number 19 is a tie between Bob Dylan and America. Wow, Bob Dylan's so low. I thought I had like, 
It's it's only like a Rolling Stone, but it's only I like thought I had that like way up in the in the all time list. You had that at number uh wait let let me do like math like two or three at or number something? seven seven wow did it really fall that far down I thought it was going uh to be well well I mean let, let's do the math here you said uh, what was it two or three well the number two was San Francisco yeah and your number three Breakfast was Breakfast at Tiffany's Tiffany. right and cool and Cooley was number five. Right. Uh, yeah, so let's see. I think center field was like in there somewhere. Uh, number four was um, well, it was Don McLean American Pie. Yeah. Uh, well, center field was uh, one was uh, one below. So uh, one below. Yeah. Uh, so it was the number eight. Okay. Song. Wait, number nine song. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. If, number Bob, nine, if Bob Dylan was Bob eight, Dylan was then, eight. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Pretty cool. And I believe uh, yeah, right. Coolio was yeah was uh, number Five. six. Six or five? Six. Uh, six. He has 20 oh. points, so it's okay. six. Okay. Um, which means that I think CCR was uh, number five with something. Might have been, yeah. Maybe wrote a song for everyone or something like that, yeah. Uh, what was I? All right, uh, then we have the John Fogarty Fisher Z tie. Mm-hmm. Then at 23, we have the Red Hot Chili Peppers. With only Californication and the all time list, number 10. Yeah. And then we have, once again, all the stuff that didn't make yeah, it the, from the, the other scum. list. Uh, which is. Ghost, Theory of a Dead Man, The Alan Parsons Project, Gary and the Pacemakers, Dragon Force, and The Band. The Band. <laughs> I, I just love how that, how that counts. What a way, to, yeah, what a way to cap it off. That's great. Um, no Beatles, spe- specifically uh, interesting lack of Beatles and, and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the most interesting huh. thing that happens, if you add ours together, was kind of the ones we talked about already. My goal for this group. And great. then um, you get a little bit, your Bob Dylan gets a little bit of a boost from me. Mm-hmm. Which puts him from, like, 18 points to 21. Yeah. Which, of course, gets him a lot of spots. Which is deserved. On the list, but not that much either. And the most... The biggest jump that happens, like, in, in like, placement relative to everything else uh, is Steer of a Dead Man. Because we both had him at the exact same yeah. spot. So, the same song. so they get twice as many points on the yeah. combined list where most artists yeah. don't get nearly as much of a boost. Yeah. Except for, like, Bull Beat and Sabaton. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, so they actually jump, like, from being, like, in, like, the bottom, like, third of the list to being, in, like, oh, slightly above the middle. Yeah. So That makes sense. Low, low Life is an exceptional song. It's really good. So I think that's... that's so uh, what does that tell us? Not much. Nothing. But, but the <laughs> point... We got a podcast topic from it. Yeah, no, the point here was, and I think that worked really well, is where we would talk about why mm-hmm. things were in certain places and yeah. how some of those clearly d- aren't yeah. very representative and how others are interesting. So I, I think that's what I was trying maybe, to get out of this. Maybe we should do this with um, every year's full list. So like all the songs each year, we'll do it for 10 years or so and then we do the whole procedure. And then we maybe we, we get some uh, more clarity. So wait, you, you mean like a whole list of every single song ranked? Every, every song. Year? Yeah, no, that's the whole 2019 list, rank him one to 200 or something, point scoring, bam, and then, uh, you know. Uh, that's, first of all, a lot of work, and second of all, we'd have to adjust for having different list lengths. It's, um, it's not the best thing. I mean, I know that this isn't great either for, like, yeah. statistical purposes, but I thought that, I thought it resulted in some interesting numbers here and yeah, there. And some surprises. I think the most interesting thing for me was just that between the two of us, the number two artist was Michael Oldfield. Yeah. Which, I mean, I don't think we would ever mm. say that in our shared opinion that's the second best musical artist of all time or anything like that. No. Though I, I, but definitely, God, vou- I definitely vouch for him to be like top 10 all time. But then again, we'd also say Bob Dylan is top 10 for sure. Like musical artist of all time. And you know who's also top 10 artist of all who we never mentioned? Simon and Garfunkel. Just, oh, right, yeah. just flat out not on the list. They're As not- a matter of fact, did I not list America anywhere by Simon and Garfunkel? Uh... That's I, insane. Like, was it not on my 2018 top 10 list? That would be, that would just be madness or my all time. I don't have it written down, but wow. I did write down all of the individual lists yeah. so we can double check That's crazy. that. That's um, That would be so wrong. There is a spreadsheet with the name The Best Songs, the. which uh, lists all the lists here. Your top 10 of all time was It's My Life, San Francisco, Breakfast at Tiffany's, American Pie, Proud, Proud, Mary, Proud Mary, Gangster's Paradise, Loch Lomond, yeah. Like a Rolling Stone, yeah. Centerfield, and Californication. Right. And your top 10 of 2018 was Leningrad, Birth of Your Soul, Floating Vibes, Two Friends, The Last Stand, 
Smooth Criminal, I Am Australian, Sister Golden Hair, Marlies, and Can't Keep Johnny Down. I wonder that maybe, maybe... And this, I might have misspelled Marlies, I'm not sure. Uh, no, it's, I think Isn't, it's correct. Um, I thought it was a Z somewhere in there. Uh, no, that's correct. Maybe it's, um... Maybe it said that um, that, that song was actually from 2017 for me. It's also the the whole thing where, as I said, like... So it's sort of like the in-between thing. Uh, maybe. like, the times that are changing. I think I had, at number 11, mm-hmm. for the all-time list... Which means it just barely didn't make the cut. Thereby, Bob Dylan's losing a lot of potential points just because, and very unfortunately, that's just where it ended up. And that's what happens here. It's like, obviously those numbers aren't very representative because the sample size is way too small. Damn. But it was very interesting what the results were. We both had a Sabaton song at number 5 of, our, of 2018. And then we also both had Sabaton songs at like number 25 of 2019 and then a couple others. Um, yeah, I the I was a little bit surprised that there wasn't a lot of ties with uh, multiple songs. The only ties uh, were usually with individual songs. The only exception there being Bon Jovi and uh, the Rolling Stones for me tying with, uh, I think, two songs each as well. It's Runaway and Have a Nice Day on yeah. one and four. Wait, no, that, that, that's not correct then. On one and four for, oh, right. There's a Stone song somewhere else then, isn't there? Or or did I do the math wrong? Because I have one at one and six of twenty nineteen, and I have one at one and four of all time for Bon Jovi. Oh no, wait, no, it wasn't Stones. It was Sabaton and the Stones. That's what it was. Sorry. Why did? By the way, if you differentiate between John Bon Jovi and Bon Jovi, then why do you spell like why do you misspell every single word in John Bon Jovi? Did he, does he spell it without an H? It's without an H, and okay. you know how he spells no, no. Bon Jovi. Here's the thing, right? I know how he spe- how his legal name is spelled, yeah. but he does spell his last name that way as an artist on the release. So then use Bon Jovi. Like the ba- I listed it exactly, I'm not sure about the John part, but I listed it as it would be listed on... Uh, Stupid. That, on like the dumb. album or whatever. Uh, Blood of Glory by... Oh yeah, he does. But yeah, they do yeah. spell Bon Jovi... Um, the way they the band spells yeah. it, not the person. I did misspell his first name. Fair enough. Who spells John without an H? Like uh, um, the the like John as in Garfield's owners also spell without an H. <laughs> John Arbuckle. I was about to say that, that man has a last yeah. name. Then what, what a legend. But yeah, um, yeah, but like my favorite, my favorite John that's not a musician. <laughs> Perhaps, dude. People named John make good music. They do. Which. I believe is just because that's a very common name. Yeah. But still. Yeah, you got you got uh, you got John Fogarty, you got John Majovi, you got uh, John Lennon. Yeah, John uh, <laughs> John Vladimir Lennon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. A lot, a lot of John. I'm pretty sure there is. Uh, oh wait, oh, Henry John Deutschendorf Jr. Yeah, yeah. Don't, Don't forget. Not, about I'm, not, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go with the second names though. Do we go by uh, by like build names though? Because John Denver is what he goes. By. Fair enough. Yeah, that that I'll count. <laughs> that's that's better. Yeah, I'll I'll take that. Um, a lot of Johns. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure if I looked it up, I there's more. Probably there have more. a couple other. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like in bands, you have a bunch of Johns, yeah. but like just solo artists. Let's see, J O. We have John Denver, John Farley, yeah, John so, Lennon, John okay. Mellencamp, John, John Paul Young. Fair enough. Johnny Cash is born. Johnny Cash, yeah. That, I mean, okay. That's that's fine. But yes, a lot of Johns. But that's probably because it's a popular name. Anyway, that is uh, the first I think, topic. I think that's the first topic, yeah. Uh, Let's so do what we do the with the new format and stuff. And we do Facts of the Week now. With facts of the Week. Before we do the Halftime Show. Which what is coincidentally it? relates to the first topic in a little bit of that's a way. That's pretty good. The kids about music. What's your fact? And what I'm going to steal something from you here. And I'm going to pose it as a question. Mm. And because that was is like five times though, I still say it. I'm just gonna steal this from you. Yeah, uh, and it's almost a little bit like a game show because there is Ooh. four aspects to this that I'm gonna question on. And the question wait in, in, in game shows they got four answers to choose from. Well, in, in some no, but the not part, four questions because there's multiple questions. That, that <laughs> okay, answer. okay. And the game we're playing today is called "Where Is That Band From?" Where is that band from? And the first band that I'm gonna ask you where it is from is. What was I gonna? Hey, anyways, I'm I'm gonna go with the others first. I'm gonna remember the last one. America, Earth, 
I, I need that to be oh, a little bit. Oh, 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 I need at least a country. Uh, uh, I don't city, see city would be borders, nice. JJ. Uh, um, the band America. The band America. Probably not from America. That's the point, yes. That would be... That would not make more sense. Um, I'm trying to think back. If they sound like native English speakers. In, in singing, it's surprisingly tough. Like, like that's... Yeah. Don't, dude, for real. Like... If, if you talk in English to a German, you can hear it from miles away because the eardrums are rupturing. It's that bad. But when they sing, you almost can't tell. To be fair, most of the of the German English singing singers also speak very reasonably well. Yeah. Uh, but still, you can tell so much. Like, yeah. No. Like, for example, like, I, like with Fiddler's Green, for example, yeah. I can tell they're not native English speakers when they sing. I can't tell you they're German specifically. There is that one line in Yinnai which just rubs me the wrong way, where um, his face is like that from a monkey. Uh, from, like, no, from a, just like just from like a monkey. From yeah, a yeah. Monkey. Okay, yeah, fair enough. You can tell they wrote the, the lines themselves. Yeah, yeah but like that, that one that, is just yeah. grammatically. It, yeah, yeah, that's it German. Just sounds yeah, German. That's, yeah, that's that's German all the way. That's true. But like sing ways, you can't. But tell. Yeah, like otherwise, otherwise it's fine. I can like from my house, I can hear individual German politicians in Brussels speaking because it's that bad. Like, not even, like, well, via telecommunications, like the waves, man. The German people speaking English waves are something else. Like, they just they just hit me. Like, no, it, it's like true. Like, like, if you hear someone... Most Germans, if you hear them speak English, obvious Run. exceptions, <laughs> uh, then... Mm-mm. You don't. You can hear it. You don't want that. You don't want any of that. Don't assume at a, at any point that this is how Germans feel. I, I feel this like, is the worst. I feel it's like uh, the the German accent is one of the most distinct ones I know. Yeah, it's 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 terrible. Like I wish normal Germans would avoid English as, as much as the French do, because the French speak, even though it's not good, much more pleasant English than than Germans do. But they avoid it. Where's America from? Where's America? I'm stalling. Um, <laughs> where's America from? So I know a uh, horse will name obviously sister golden hair. It doesn't sound very non-English, so I'm just gonna say they're like from the British Isles, London, England. Yeah. Next one, Asia. <laughs> are you doing this now? Is it gonna be like oh Europe and give me the and are you gonna do that? Like Europe oh. is from Sweden, so it's boring. Okay, cool. I'm I'm just giving you. I, okay, yeah. I'm gonna tell you this much. I'm just giving you the ones that are named after location. Yeah. But are not from that location. Cool. Cool. So Asia, that excludes like half the population. That's great. Um, well, I mean, there's like this tiny yeah. circle. Let's say they're from. Like, let's say they're from. Uh, well, actually, how many songs do we even have, and what's distinct about it? There's uh, only. There's only one, I believe. What is it again? Uh, help me out. Let, not like I remember, but uh, uh, I can look it up, which yeah, is a nice thing. Yeah, it's a it's and, a pretty decent song. Uh, here the moment. I the moment. I didn't even look it up. Like else come out for this. I, I can open the folder yet. <laughs> I, I I somehow have an inclination that they're from like Europe somewhere. Um, I'm gonna say Germany. Why not? London, England. London, England. Okay, cool. Uh, really. Next up, we got the one I forgot earlier. Texas. Texas. <laughs> All right, they're not from Texas. They're not from Texas. Right. They sound like they speak. I mean, the the English sounds extremely clean, but that in singing just doesn't mean much. <laughs> I'm, are they from England too? Glasgow, Scotland. Scot. They're from Scotland. Yeah, like from how, Scotland. How does a Scottish person drop their accent like that? Just like, what? And we got one more. Berlin. There's a band called Berlin. Yes, there's a band called Berlin. Do I know any songs? Uh, I don't do have a song? know. If you do, I have one, which is how I. Uh, which is uh, take my breath away. I'm not sure if you. Are. Berlin. So I, I can't. I can't. Yeah, uh, it's hard to guess off, off anything. Let's just anything. say Moscow, like Russia. Orange County, California. Orange County, California. Cool. Why, in God's name, if you live in Orange County, California, <laughs> do you name your Ber- do you feel- Berlin? Yes, that's. I I don't get it. Like I honestly, the, why would you do that? And yeah, like Europe are from Sweden, Kansas are from Kansas. You know that like that's not yeah. very interesting. Um, one that I that was technically a bit of a lie was um, there's a band called Atlanta Rhythm Section. Right. They're from like a small town in Georgia, but they're just not from actually from Atlanta. From Atlanta. But close enough, you know. Yeah, uh, that's cool. But yeah, those were the four bands that are named after locations that were a lie. You're from Cal, and your name is South Berlin. <laughs> and both Asia and America are just straight <laughs> up from England. <laughs> Crazy. That's insane. And I mean. That was a lot of fact. Yeah, oh, cool. There was there was 
three bands that were from the British Isles that were named after places elsewhere. I, I'm not getting over the Texas thing. Like, oh yeah, Texas Lightning is from like I think Hamburg. But yeah, that's German. That's German. They're, they're German that. for sure. But I don't get how like 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 you remember how I said the whole thing about you can hear a German anywhere. Yeah. Same for a Scotsman. But that's at least, like, a pleasant accent. The German one's terrible. But the the same goes in a positive way. Like, you can hear a Scotsman out of a crowd of 10,000. Yeah. That's yeah, that's totally. weird. That's the same. Um, my fact of the week is, and this might pertain to a lot of people out there and might hopefully drop some extra motivation, um, a resolution that is specifically made for New Year's is at least 10 times more likely to be kept up in the long run than at any other time of the year. Despite us always going on about it's just another day, it doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. It actually works. It's purely a psychological I'm, thing. I'm because psychological, you view yeah. New Year's as like a new chapter sort of thing. But yeah, in a... In a Tabula rasa. St- yes. In a study... Um, in a study tracing that sort of stuff, those those goals in a, in a control group of people, um, over 10 times more people uh, kept their habit that they uh, had decided on or whatever or st- left their habit be that they decided to stop or, uh, or take up uh, at least six months after New Year's. I would assume that would work less on people like us, though, who are always about, on about Probably. how it's just a regular day. Probably, though I always want to be careful with those statements. Because uh, psychology, in a lot of ways, you just even though you are aware of stuff, it still it still yes. happens. Yes, I mean to you. Uh, the placebo effect works even if you know it's a placebo. Yeah, because you're just so used to taking pills mm-hmm. to get better, it still works. Doesn't work as well, but it still works. It, it still works. Yeah. Um. So, but I, I was just saying, I'm not. I, I did. I didn't say it wouldn't work at all on us. I was just saying I think it less, would work less maybe, so on us. Maybe because we don't put a lot of value into the whole New that's, Year's that's thing true. nearly as much as other people. Yeah, that's true. We have never been big resolution guys. Like, oh, like, like get up on January 1st, but like, this is New Year, no me sort of things. Like, I, and excuse the pun, but I actually have a good example of how I'm not a very big resolution guy. I still have all my monitors in 1080p. Still? Yeah, people, people are moving to 4K for a while now. Like, well, yeah. 4K, it's usually like, Two K sort of can more. bugger off, like yeah. I don't even knock. <laughs> Stupid. That's the same with the whole like, oh, I'm I'm playing my video games at seven thousand frames per second. I can't tell the difference between thirty or forty, but I'm playing at seven thousand. You can tell the difference between thirty. Can well, you? maybe not thirty and forty, but definitely thirty and sixty. Can you tell the difference? Um, well, your I thought the threshold was twenty four. Well, that okay. That's for. The perception of your mm-hmm. eye perceives in that rate, but first of all, it's not perfectly synced to the monitor necessarily. Your eyes are, so it could still matter that way. And it's a lot of just um, the animation being smoother and the mouse being more responsive and that kind all of right. stuff, which it doesn't necessarily pertain just to sight. Fair enough. I I can I can play Hearthstone. At I twenty five. I personally wouldn't notice the difference either because I don't play a lot of like shooters and that kind of stuff yeah. where reaction is important. But if you do, it's been shown that it works. I mean, I, I, I see that it works smoother because, like, since I got the new computer, for example, I'm yeah. running World of Warcraft at high graphics at, at, like, 120 or something. It looks smoother, like you said, than before when I did 30. But, um, like, it's not game-breaking or anything, so... No, but, again, if, if you're... I think um, I think it's sort of like I'm putting so much stuff into, like, uh, a specific thing. Like, you put sort of um, how you do 80% of the work for 20% of the profit... Yeah, sort of th- it's that it's a very high percentile of that that sort of graph. Yeah, but to be fair, if you're like the kind of person who plays a lot of games where reaction time matters, yeah. it helps you. Yeah, if professional, like if you're like a professional Counter Strike player or something, say, for sure. At the point where you're like competitive or something, yeah. then you take every edge you can oh, get. Oh yeah, for sure. And that in that in that case, for sure. But generally, hmm. let's do crosswords. We let's got do the halftime show. We got crosswords. Sunday crosswords. What's this one about? JJ? Uh, this is one is called unabbreviated. It's symmetrical. I like that. Oh, it is. That's nice. That's really cool. Unabbreviated. So it's unabbreviated words, but they're all very short, I guess. Maybe? Boring tool. JJ's. No, just kidding. Uh, there's also Cleopatra's snake, which I don't personally know. Unless it's the species and it's a boa, which is the only probably one. That... Not, probably not. No, but that's the only one that came to mind yeah. that is three letters. Whoops, I'm jumping around again. Specific one. Let's uh, keep moving. Then we have erosion degradation, degradation. which is rust, I would assume. No, it's not. No. Huh. Volcanic output. It's lava. Uh, marine mammal. Seal. Hmm. You're good at this. Uh, 
Apply concrete. Oh, okay. pave. Yeah, yes. obviously. Uh, Those were still pretty simple. And then highway exits. Or ramps or lanes, depending on what they want. Yeah, that's cool. And then the question still is boring tool ends with an L. And is it, Cleopatra is it Snake. Asp? Oh, it's Asp. It's also a asp. snake that has three yeah. letters. Uh, erosion degradation. Where? Where. Wear and tear. And then this one is AWL. Oh, okay, which, cool. All. Oh. Okay. Set down. Put. <laughs> uh, start over, redo. No, that's no. four letters again. No. Right. Um. So no. then we have. Let me get there again. Yeah. Sports zone. Pixel image. For each per. per. Uh, take advantage. Use. use. Uh, five double is ten. So the sports uh, place is an arena, I guess. Arena. Just type two A's. Cool. Start over. Reset. Oh, so it wasn't with me. Fair enough. Uh, custard desert. Dessert. Dessert. Oh, that makes more sense. Man, imagine a desert made out. Oh, wow. Four, <laughs> comma supporting. As in either one. Uh, pro. Uh. Castle yeah. Dessert, we have Fisherman's Need. Need. Nets? No, I mean, that's not the only way. Pole? To... I'm pretty sure they're... Bait? Lure? I f don't think... Never mind. There's uh, a lot of four-letter words at Fisherman's Need. Quick <laughs> Relationship. Second letter is an L, by the way, if that helps. Addition signs a plus... Uh, not rare. comes rare, and two halves are one. <laughs> cool. Three points. And then the custard dessert ends with L-A-N. All right, cool. That's probably a vowel. Yeah. And then we have bring up, raise. Raise, All right. And then we have shock, astound. Stun? No, it doesn't. Oh, it does go, yeah, it does go. Got that it. is actually correct, too, yeah. wow. Uh, tie messily. Chest bone. Sternum. Right. I, I, I blanked on that yeah. one. Oh, wait, this one's probably easy. Played pattern. Tartan. Tartan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not too it's cool. like, you know, the red stuff in the running lanes when they do Olympics and stuff to sprint? Like the material of that. Oh, That's called okay. tartan. Uh, parents, sisters, and aunt. Aunt. A quick relationship. Blink. No. That sounded wrong. Cool. So, yeah, so let's do uh, this, I guess. Time is... Tangle. Oh. Um, and I guess we're going to go over there. We're going to continue yeah. for now. Law-abiding. Legal? legal? <laughs> yeah. Uh, remove graphite. Erase. Or Fair remove enough. anything else. Noah's ship is the Ark. Noah get the boat. And then uh, intermediate... Theorem. Oh, lemma. Oh, yeah. You know. Uh, peace portion. Part. Fallen. Uh, pixel image. Oh, God. Well, it's, it's, uh, yeah. <coughs> Raster graphic. I've heard that before. Chess ending is a mate. I like how flag would also fit in there. That's actually pretty Oh, good. yeah. <laughs> if you're me, it's usually... <laughs> Divided equally. Uh, Shared. I don't know that word. Does, <laughs> does, does, uh, does sharing uh, imply exact equality? No. I don't think so either. Uh, bashful timid. Wait, bash Shy. Acrobatic move. Three letters. No clue, man. Intense wrath. Like... Rage, ire? but it's ire. Okay, yeah. I mean, because I was, I was thinking yeah. rage, and I was too well. Traverse snow is ski, ski. and then we have what is this? Clothing article shirt. Is shirt. And excessively excited is hype. Hyper. Really? Hyper. Because <laughs> excessively. So kill. Cool. Uh, let's see. Big, Big building. building. Ed something. Neptune's weapon is a trident. Is it an edifice? The edifice. big building. Edifice. Yes. 
remove ground. Dig. <laughs> I like it. Lined, lined up. up. Aligned. I thought that too. That, that makes, seems weird. It's very close though. Well, yeah, it's like it's yeah. too etymologically close to anyway. extremely mournful. Yes, uh, tragic. Uh, lacking ability. Unable. Just very simple, right? Ugh, God, I, 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 hate the simple <laughs> ones more so than the actual knowledge ones. Yeah. Like the just the name of the synonym syno- or something yeah. is like no. Stallion's, Stallion's partner. partner. No clue. Excellent. Makes law, and something. Truth alternative. Uh, dear. Oh, I was like, alternative truths? What are we doing here? Uh, Polar's grizzly as a bear's. bears. I, I, I'm finally getting mm-hmm. the plural thing now. Yeah. Stop activity. Cease. Yep. I knew that one. What, what, what was Wait, this that was again? not strong, which is just Mara. weak, I guess. Uh, what? Uh, 55 across? One, one below that? Not strong, should just be weak? Easy class. I, I wasn't quite getting that. Oh, yeah. uh, the the uh, the stallion was the partner was the mare because it's oh. male and female horses. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, past due. Uh, late. Yeah. Uh, women's garment is that a dress? No. Is that a skirt? Yes. Yes. Uh, disease free. Mind mineral is probably or. or yeah, and then let's see what do we have here. Which person? Who? 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 Yeah. Who? Who? Surface burn is sear. Uh, salad vegetables kale. kale, and then what is this? Alec the same Alec. like. Yeah. Easy. And then this one is litter, litter. obviously. Man, we're balling. We're like halfway through uh, the time. Occurrence happening is an event. event. I figured that one. Wanders about as roams. Yes. No, it's not. No, it's not. But the S is correct. Oh. Because there was uh, makes yes. laws and acts. I even thought it was roams. Oh. I was I was I was confident. Water covered is wet. And then we have a uh, solemn purposes of vow. No. And then we have night before Eve. Eve. Oh roves. Roves. Yeah. I'm it's a rover and a chief. Yeah, exactly. Uh and I didn't even that net, was net tennis obstacle. obstacle. Uh, television drama is a soap, which yeah. they call that because they try to sell soap. I no roof edge. I'm not even sure. Uh, natural condensation, like vapor, like um. Uh, roof. Uh, what street? Street Avenue Road. Road. Whoops. There we go. Uh, rescue safeguard. Safe. That will so, be safe. There we go. Wow. Uh, church seat. Uh, roof, edge, natural condensation, dew. dew. I have, wait, 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 uh, dew, 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 W. Dew, dew, yeah, right. Yeah. I, was, I was thinking of the other dew for a second. Dew, just, dew. Is it pew? Like P-E-W? Church seat? Yeah. Uh, yes, it is. And, what, oh, we're missing what quick relationship oh, and oh, custard, oh. Uh, custard dessert. We're still missing that one. Uh, just try vowels, man. I don't, uh, I don't know either of those. Ling. Oh, it's a fling. Oh, it's not a vowel? No, it, no, it's flan. Flan. The, the dessert, and then fling I, is I've the never, short relationship. I've never heard of either of those. What the? You've right? never heard of a fling? No. Never heard of it. I, that, that, that's common. I, like, I have, I've, I've never heard of either of those words, but we, uh, we had enough time to brute force it. Okay, anyway. question, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did this very fast. As a matter of fact, we did this in under 10 minutes. Gains time. That was great. Because it was uh, only 18-minute timer. Yeah. The other one, next one's relatively short. It's just 12 minutes. Okay. Do we want to do that right now? You know what? The podcast is pretty long. Let's not. Let's okay. let's keep it. Let's keep it for next week. Then we're going back to full screen. Yeah, we're going back to full screen. And we're going to talk about who is going to be the next war chief. That was at least that was the original. Perhaps. Premise. Yeah, we'll talk. We're going to talk some, about Warcraft, Warcraft, and that's yeah. the leading question. Um, and the idea is who is going to be the next war chief because clearly there's really not any stability in the horde ever since Thor left. Like hasn't been much. There would have been if they just didn't kill Vol'jin. Well, yeah. I like that guy. You like Vol'jin? Yeah. You didn't like Garrosh? No. I thought you were a horde boy or something. Well, yeah, and clearly the majority of the horde, or at least big chunks of the horde, later decided it was a bad idea that Garrosh was the leader, and then they, uh, you know, they went behind his back. Like, they... I, fi- I feel like Garrosh represented the horde so well. Like, he's exactly what the horde is. Like, as a Solanus, like, just evil scum. That's, 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 because that's all that the horde really is, so I think... I don't. I don't quite the understand. The problem is, you've been uh, too exposed to that alliance propaganda, man. That it's alliance insane. propaganda. 
That alliance propaganda. Really? I mean, come on now. How? Okay, then explain to me how the Horde is not the evil side. Explain to me how Alliance and Horde are, is not very clearly good and evil in Warcraft. Like, how is, how is the story not told exactly that way? Well, it's I'm pretty sure it is told that way if you're playing from the Alliance perspective. Because how that's it, how wars work. You make your general, opponents look up to the bad told, guys. How is it told from the Horde perspective? Do you get, like, if you if you play Horde, do you get, like, freaking Alliance folk running through your villages and, and slaughtering people and stuff? I'm pretty sure it has happened. Do you yeah, get, uh, like, constant the, assaults um, on your... Kulturas, they, they were very uh, naughty during the, like, the, the Warcraft 3, I think, is around that was happening. They were, like, attacking, uh, I think, what was it, Troll or Goblin Village or something like that? So maybe Zandalar? Um, and then you have, uh, I mean, the thing is, the Horde is more of a tragic story, really, because they were corrupted by demons, well, the, the, the uh, original orcs were. yeah. yeah. Uh, driven to a different world, and yes, the orcs were literally the... corrupted by demons. Yes, was the horde under false pretense, meaning yes. that uh, they are the victims of this one, and mm. and then you know the whole first war happened. Uh, humans then put orcs in concentration camps, which was very fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, work camps, labor camps, that all that whole ordeal because uh, humans not wanting to kill their prisoners left them alive. I want to see orcs do that. I want to see orcs be like, nah, you know what? I'm not going to slaughter these folks now. I'm, I'm going to actually spare their lives. I'm pretty sure it was uh, Thrall, actually, who uh, was the first to start establishing um, political relations between the Alliance and the Horde. I think that... Yeah, him uh, and Jaina, right? Yeah, but... Um, so, I think Thrall was the one who approached her, though, so that would be uh, the Horde trying to find peace. After um, trying to... After, after invading a planet that they didn't belong to. Yes, because they were corrupted by the uh, demon blood. Then other races that didn't find a place elsewhere, where like the Forsaken, which um, were very much the victims of racism, um, they the only place they could kind of find refuge was the Horde. Granted, there are significant factions within the Forsaken that are assholes. I'm not going to deny that. They um, they did the whole thing where they like at one battle where they were just like try like. Basically bombing people to convert them to undead with like their weird poisonous Icarus their stuff. Plague. Um, the Blood Elves, um, formerly the High Elves, after much of their population was destroyed, they're junkies. The horde. They were all junkies. Well, they're junkies, JJ. Yes. But to them, they turned evil so they could keep being junkies. To them, magic was uh, just as much part of their life as air and water. And then so their magic- the source of magic was destroyed due, due to the arrogance of a very small part of the civilization. Well, actually, that was back. The, the, no, that, I'm, I'm trying. I, I was thinking of the Sundering, but their their a sort their source of magic was destroyed, and then um, some of them tr- tried very aggressively and, and killed for magic. Others did not, um, but they were also, as a faction, very much destroyed, and they sought refuge in the Horde, like a lot of races If did. you were on crack for ten years, and suddenly your source of crack went away, your dealer died, is that a justification for you to then join a gang to violently get more crack? I think you're yes or no. <laughs> misframing the, posi- no, uh, the, the occurrences here a little bit. I'm not. That's, exactly, that's like the exact scenario. The the horde is a gang. They're a mafia. God damn it! They're the horde is a terrorist organization. That's all that the horde is. That's all the horde is, JJ. And you might notice how we haven't even talked about the Torrent yet because uh, they're just generally pretty peaceful. Yeah, the Torrent are like the only ones that I somehow like because they always be the first ones to oppose uh, anyone in power. Like, which by the way brings us into the original question: Bane Bloodhoof. Yeah, I, I was actually gonna bring that name up. I was, uh, but he got captured though. Like at least in like in, in WoW, there's a storyline where he actually helped uh, Jaina's brother to be recovered and brought him back to Jaina because he, he was captured to be turned into an undead uh, by like N- Nathanos Blightcall or something, whatever that asshole's called. Yeah, I have a vague idea. He's the, we're talking about. He's yeah. like the worst. He he he's also the guy who bombed it with like the yeah. uh, the alchemy stuff yeah. that turns people undead. Yeah, he's the worst. Um, yeah, I, I agree. So they wanted to turn him into that, and uh, and then um, they actually had Bane like arrested for that. 
when they found out. Okay. Uh, the problem is, and I agree that there's flaws within the Horde, obviously. And the problem is that it seems like they're always putting people in power that end up... Well, I mean, th- there were some reasonable people in power, namely Thrall and Vol'jin, but um, Vol'jin really didn't last very long. Um, rumor has it that Sylvanas had a hand in that, but there's no way to confirm that. Um, Garrosh was an asshole to begin with, huh. and then he was corrupted, which, you know, wasn't necessarily doing him any favors. Uh, Sylvanas seemed reasonable at first. Did I'll, she? The pro- well, to the uh, did she, like, observer. M- did she try to, like, assault Arthas and stuff, too? The pro- the big problem with uh, Sylvanas also was that a lot of... That she did... That it was later revealed that she did a lot of shady stuff before she became War Chief, even. But a lot of it wasn't necessarily that out in the open. I mean, the whole thing with um, the Valkyr was also yeah. uh, very dubious. And there is... I think that the Horde and the Alliance both, at the end of the day, are made up of factions with sub-factions which contain individuals... Mm-hmm. And on both sides, there's good and evil. Okay. It just happens that <laughs> okay. there are maybe a couple more black sheep in the horde than uh, in the alliance. Without, like, leaving out that last point, you sound like a Republican. Like, <laughs> like, seriously, like seriously. Oh, you know, there's good and bad on both. Like, no, like, like a libertarian. Like, oh, there's good and bad on both sides, but you got to find a compromise between the alliance and the horde. That's how you sound. I mean, it seems like the Alliance and the Horde were getting along very well when they had a common enemy. Uh, it just happened that, you know, that didn't really last. And, and what because happened peace... at the beginning of Battle for Azeroth? Or no, whatever. How did King Varian Rin die by any chance? What happened there? <laughs> what happened there? Common enemy? <laughs> how, did, how did he die? How did he die? How did he die, JJ? Have I ever mentioned how I don't like Sylvana? <laughs> Oh, okay. So you're gonna, so you're gonna like, so you're gonna be like that. Like, I don't like this whore person. I don't like this whore person. I don't like this whore person. But I like the whore. Why? Why? I mean, I, I see the thing is, I was, I, I had, I had, I thought it was very positive when they made a Vol'jin the war chief, and they were like, hey, uh, well, we can't have someone reasonable. Either. The, the problem is, if, see, if they, a lot go- of the problem is also meta, right? Because it's almost necessary for there to be conflict between the alliance and the horde. For the story. For a lot of the story, right? Of course. And so... But within the story, whenever, how is it not clear that the Alliance are the good ones? Whenever they have someone reasonable be the war chief, they basically decide, like, after a while, like, hmm, how do we get this reasonable person yes, to not be the war chief Exactly, anymore? exactly. But we're, ta- we're not talking meta. We're talking yeah, within the story. Uh, by the way, another Dark Horse candidate for next war chief might be Thrall. Again? Perhaps. I don't think it's going to happen, because they intentionally kind of, like moved him a little bit to the more the precipice of the story really but um in theory he would still be in the running all right i mean technically there's also like uh i don't know is Kalthus still around i don't know Kalthus sunstrider i mean you... who the fuck leads the blood elves right now i'm not sure i i i've i've usually i've heard of him but isn't he also like terrible stuff mm, well um the most most of the negative stuff about him comes from him siding with illidan who was portrayed as kind of the bad guy uh, for a while, but then they uh, showed that the Illidari, for example, you know what? Were you know what? Illidan is one of my IRL favorite characters. I really like Illidan. He's like the ultimate good guy to me. Well, the thing is, he's very much an anti-hero, right? Yeah. He does everything he does. Basically, is for good, he's with awesome. a couple of very specific exceptions, yeah. but. Overall, what he does is for good. He's the GOAT. The problem is, he sometimes does it in ways that the general populace does not agree with. Which is why he's the betrayer yeah. and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, but like he... When he was trying to nuke the Lich King, I mean, yeah. basically that's exactly what he tried to do. Yeah. <laughs> he tried to, to use mass destruction against yeah. one guy and his army. And and basically the conflict between Malfurion and Illidan was just like... Malfurion was like, you can't do this, there's going to be too much collateral damage. Huh. Illidan was like, this has to be done. We got this. Yeah. And then the same thing happened with um, the Black Citadel. They, like, There was an entire raid on the Black Citadel. I mean, it's a raid in the game. Hellfire Citadel? Uh, Black Citadel? The, isn't, it, isn't it? Oh, no, the Black Temple, sorry. Uh, the Black, Black Temple. Black Temple. Um, the, where Illidan is. Oh, okay. okay. Isn't Illidan literally a raid boss? I'm not sure about the, I'm that not sure. exact But there is a Hellfire Citadel with the Black Gate at the end where Archimonde's the end boss. Uh, not what I meant, no. 
uh, the the Black Temple where um, Illidan and like the uh, the one Draenei, like uh, what are they called? Maybe uh, the the the, the subspecies of the Draenei, almost the the, the corrupted ones. Yeah. Uh, well, corrupted kind of. Um, oh, the the, the Broken. That's what mm-hmm. they call. Uh, their leader. I don't remember what he's called. Oh, Akama and uh. Uh, Kalthas and uh, some of the Naga. Like they're all there and. The, there was a thing where, like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, Illidan is amassing an army of bad guys. Let's, like, let's fight Illidan. And it's like, well, actually, he was preparing to fight the Burning Legion. Yeah. That's what he was doing. And uh, so Which Illidan is, good thing to do. is one of those characters that is, in-universe, very misunderstood yeah, a lot not that like Not that Malfur and, and Tyrande are not fighting for a good cause. They certainly are. Yeah. But I, I do appreciate Illidan's ways mm-hmm. sometimes. Though. Uh... He was like he wasn't there like the story where he was born with the amber eyes and that means yeah. he was made for something special and Mofir uh, was I, not or something. I think the amber eyes means something like he's gonna be a great warrior. Yeah, or some like destined for greatness. I think and Mofir oh, was yeah. Mofir was not, so he was just like, oh yeah, I like this tree. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, both of them ended up doing great things in yeah. their own way. Uh, Malfurion became uh, the Shando, the the leader of the Druids. Yeah. And, um, well, the, the arch or whatever his, you know, position is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, while also him and Tyrande leading uh, the Night Elves. I think more so Tyrande for the most part, because, like, Malfurion takes, like, 100-year naps. Yeah, yeah, he just, yeah, I've seen and, that. And um, Illidan, like, he built up the Illidari. Yeah. Uh, and amassed other contacts to fight the Burning Legion, which at the time, seemed to be the biggest threat that they were facing. Of yes. course, um, the actual biggest threat would likely be um, the old gods and the Void Lords yeah. uh, behind them, because that's what the Burning Legion was fighting, and now with, uh, especially when the Burning Legion is being like shut down again and again, um, might end up being a more significant part of the story in the future, I don't know. For now, they're doing a new dimension that they just invented, basically, yeah. and... Uh, they are f- bringing back dead characters again because that's cool. Might I also mention that the first Arrow Lich King was an orc? Uh, yes, Nurzul. Mm-hmm. Um, that like which ultimate bad guy that is not uh, s- s- I want to say like out of the world of Azeroth was not a Horde. Okay, uh, so we have Gul'dan, right? He's pretty much one of the he's an orc. Uh, bad guys, yeah. Um, he was so horde that he wanted to portray the horde. That's yeah. how horde he was. Uh, he 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 was the horde's horde, is what he was. I mean, he was literally the leader of the Shadow Council, yeah. who in secret controlled the horde at yeah. the time. He wanted to make, and a then deal. he corrupted the orcs. Yes, um, that's how horde he was. Well, he also was influenced by Kil'jaeden, but that's yeah. not really. No one is debating whether or not Gul'dan is a good guy. Okay, um, then. Uh, let, let's go through this. Uh, are we going to go through the expansions one by one? Is that how we're doing this? <laughs> I mean, uh, we can do that. It should, it should know my heart, actually. Okay. So, uh, first one was the Burning Crusade. Well, after Vanilla, obviously. Yeah, Vanilla... Uh, vanilla was what exactly? What, what was the conflict there? Like, the first 60 levels. Just Alliance Horde stuff. You just had... You basically just had Kalimdor and Eastern Kingdoms. Yeah. Uh, so, Burning Crusade was about... Uh, was about uh, undead. Going right? to Outland. That was going to Outland. Oh, that was going to Outland. Yeah. Burning Crusade went to Outland. Then was Wrath of Lich King, which went to Northrend, which dealt with Lich King, obviously. Yeah, Lich King. Um, Alliance character, right? Arthas? The Lich King? Nerzul. Arthas? Nerzul. Arthas? <laughs> Nerzul made the Lich King bad. And then uh, he was like the worst ever. And then uh, an alliance hero had to sacrifice himself to keep the scourge under control. A hero yeah, of the alliance. Yeah, I, I, I've heard of Bolvar uh, Four Dragon. Don't worry about it. And guess a representative of what faction just walked into Ice Crown and destroyed the mass, presumably setting setting hundreds of thousands of zombie creatures free. Oh yeah, that was Sylvanas. That was Sylvanas. Uh, that, that happened very recently. Sylvanas represents what faction? Uh, she uh, well represents mm. is almost mm. understatement here. She is uh, the leader of the, the horde. horde. She is the lady of Undercity, the war chief of the Horde, Correct. the Banshee the Queen, Banshee Queen. Uh, the la- lady of yeah. the Undercity. There, there's a, she has a title. Some, a yeah, something, something like that. So you, you can do the whole yeah. um, 
thing that they do in Game yeah. of Thrones where like so, there's like a million times. Yeah. Like, so uh some of the story of the Lich King, uh Horde shows up and like uh biggest threat to the planet. A lion shows up and it's neutralized, Horde shows up and the threat is back. Okay, uh, let, let's keep going uh, through the expansions first. Uh, we were trying to see the bad guys. Yes, uh, well, for Breath of I Lich King... Mean, I mean, you, we kind of jumped to Shadowlands yeah. from Breath of Lich King. Yeah. There's, there's a bit next, of a Next there. is Cataclysm, which is just Deathwing. That's Deathwing. Then it's Mist of Pandaria, which is clearly Garrosh. Uh, Mist of Pandaria, the conflict is the territorial whole, at first about Horde versus Alliance who can control of the, Pandaria. The whole pinnacle of the entire expansion is the Siege of Orgrimmar, where you kill Garrosh at the end. Uh, with most of the Horde supporting that. the Yes. The Shah are one of the key enemies in there, which yeah. are remnants of when Yashiraj, they destroyed Yasharaj. Yeah. Uh, they corrupted uh, Garrosh, and then the Alliance and Horde mm-hmm. both fought to defeat him. Correct. So, arguably, for the most part, it's, it is Alliance versus Horde in the beginning. Which is territorial in nature. Yes. There's no strict good and bad guys. Not all the Horde, by the way. Garrosh still had a bunch of supporters at the time. And then, at the end of the day, the Horde was on the good side. Then, uh, no af- one would admit it after Garrosh was gone. Just like, you know, Nuremberg Trials. Oh, have you heard of Adolf Hitler? Never seen the guy. <laughs> German German Nazi scientist. Never never heard of him. The mustache man? Oh, never seen him in pictures. That's, that's what that was. And uh, then after that, we have Worlds of Draenor. Yes, after Pandaria. Which was all about... Dark Portal, uh, well, uh, Iron Horde. Yeah, I was about to say, the, the, the main enemy was um, one of the dragons who freed uh, Garrosh before the trial, and then really? set that whole thing off. Well, after the trial, actually, before the execution. Was it? Was that Draenor the main enemy? Uh, so, n- not of, not the... Uh, Gar- Garrosh actually was the main enemy at the end of the day, okay, right? Okay, yeah. Fine. And he led the Iron Horde... Uh, which is an alternate universe version of the Horde mm-hmm. that is technically a separate faction, but yes, arguably Horde-ish. The Horde. Uh, after that, There's Legion. we have Legion, mm-hmm. where the enemy is outsiders. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, yeah. technically, you could make the argument that uh, their two biggest, ge- two of their biggest generals. Are in fact a corrupted Renai. Well, corrupted Eridar. Um, oh, you mean uh, you mean uh, kill Jade and kill Jade and Archimonde. Yeah. yeah. Well, Archimonde actually they both were uh, were raid bosses in earlier expansions. I think. Yes. For, for some. But you know, speaking of like the factions yeah. that the bad guys would most closely associate yeah. with. So were the the Draenei back then ever associated with any kind of alliance? Like, was the alliance even? A thing? Well, back then they, they weren't the Draenei. They picked they were them. The they picked them off of like Draenor, right? Yes. Like, before anyone ever came to Azeroth. They they did that. And, by the way, Prophet Val is, like, the best. Well, they, they, they came uh, to Azeroth after the first invasion. Mm-hmm. When the Dark Portal first connected Draenor yeah. and uh, Azeroth. Correct. Uh, Which so, the orcs invaded, you know, the humans. Just, you know. Who opened the Dark Portal? Mediv and Gul'dan. Gul'dan being an orc... And Medivh being a human. Being literally possessed by what? Like Sargeras or something. Uh, yes. But, again, the entire orc race was corrupted by the blood of, um... Uh, what's his name? The, the, the fucking, uh... The, not, not a Dreadlord? What, what are they? The, the, the um... Void Lords? Or... No. Um, the... There's a specific type of demon, um... I'm trying to think of. I'm also trying to think of the name of the individual one. Uh, Manoroth is the, the oh, demon okay. I'm thinking of. yeah. Uh, they, there's a specific type of demon that he is... He's like this, the skeletal guy, is that it? No, 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 no. Um, he's the second to last boss in Hellfire He is, uh, well. like some of the, there's, those also exist yeah, right. in, uh, he is, blah, 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 race, an island. An island, okay. Uh, uh yeah, the, but it's like the undead the, demon sort of thing. I mean, I guess they're technically yeah. undead, yeah. Uh, they they also exist in Hearthstone. There is the yeah. uh, the the guy who gets more health if in in in, yeah. in battlegrounds. The more you've lost that mm-hmm. that one, uh, those types of folks. Yeah. I thought it was a oh yeah, pit lords. That's the name I was trying to oh, think of because an island I would not have come up with. Yeah, but fair enough, pit lords. Pit lords. Yeah. So uh, evil stuff. So let's do a thought experiment, right? Yes. Said uh, say um. Say, like, Sargeras showed up, like, outside, like, just uh, in downtown, and corrupted the both of us, right? And uh, he made, like, he say, like, he made me 
and you open a portal between our living rooms or like our bedrooms or whatever, right? Yes. And say he made me like invade your bedroom and stuff. So I invade your room and I, I take your okay. shit and I and I like destroy stuff and I just am here now, right? Uh, and then after that, like we're no longer corrupted, basically. Like, but I'm like we're good. Like it happened, but I'm here now. Like I'm I'm no longer corrupted, but I just stay here and I actually keep terrorizing you. First of all, the orcs were still corrupted. You can see how most of their skin is still green, by the way, which is so the I, funny thing where so the orcs so, is one of the few who isn't. So is the horde today still corrupted? Well, the orcs still have the corrupted blood. Either way, but they they're are not evil. directly controlled. Either way, they are evil because if they are corrupted, they're literally the essence of evil, and if they're not. They're evil for not fucking off after stopping well, I mean, being corrupted. They're evil in the same way that like the Void Elves are evil, where they they are powered by Void Energy, but they're not necessarily fully controlled by it. So if it might they, be influenced by yeah, it a little bit. So they have the essence of evil in them, but they also purposely decide to do evil things. That makes it worse. Uh, when do they decide to do evil things again? When they stuck around on Azeroth and start like like invading Stormwind, were the crap portals and, even still open? Inv- invading Pandaria and stuff. Whoa, 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 whoa! The Alliance invaded Pandaria just as much as the war. The li- the Alliance discovered Pandaria. The Alliance were the Vikings. The Horde were the Spaniards in America. I feel like both of those factions are not very... Uh, very but the Vikings just showed up and settled down. The Spanish The Vikings like, sacked villages. That's literally the, all they do. Maybe that was not... Maybe Vikings is even a good comparison. Say it's <laughs> That's like, what I'm saying! Okay, say it's, say it's like the ancient, uh, the ancient uh, Eastern Russians that once... That came through Alaska and became the Native Americans, right? That's actually the Pandar, not the Alliance. But that sort of behavior was exhibited... By the Alliance. And then Christopher Garrosh Columbus shows up and is like, y'all just gotta get out of here because this is my territory now. Dude, Columbus was an idiot, but that's a whole different story. Um, no, I mean, the, both the Alliance and Horde established outposts on, ter- on foreign territory and then fought each other in basically... Yeah. I was gonna call the proxy war, but since their own troops... And what there, what is the really... purpose of the Alliance? Cooperation with the Pandarans, right? Like invite him to join the alliance and just hang out. And what was what was the point of Garrosh? Oh, the, the, this land mine now. They were both trying to get territorial I'm, advantages. I'm, I'm taking this. Like Garrosh, is, like Horde just showed up, be like, yeah, this. I'll take this one. That's what they did. I mean, that dude, that that's like saying when like you know America and Russia are fighting proxy war somewhere in the Middle East. Like, how, what, how, like, America is the good guys, because... Well, first of all, they are clearly not. Like, that's very yeah. clearly defined, and it's not there. It hasn't been that way for 25 years, but... Um, no, it's like if a, if a new island in the Pacific showed up, like, right in between Japan and, and say, America, right? Like, a new island just formed, and there ha- happened to be population, right? And then, um, and then, uh, Japan rode some sailboats over there and was like, hey, how y'all doing? You want to, like, be friends and do some trading and stuff? And then America, like, just came up with some boats with, like, r- coming off the ship, guns drawn, be like, yo, give us all your stuff and, and like, jump in the water. Like, get out of here. We're taking this. That's, uh, that's not kind of characteristic for That America, is very, no. <laughs> that is characteristic um, of American, yes. No, no, the, po- the point is, uh, but the better comparison would be if both just started, like, like, they, they basically, one of them found the island and they both just uh, started building, like, uh, Outposts on like the shoreline or something, and then they started moving in. Didn't they ki- kidnap Anduin also, like in Pandaria, the horde? Yeah, maybe. Did they do know. that, like just, just the king's kid. I mean, that sort of stuff also happens in both ways. Like both of the factions take business off each other and stuff like the that. The kings they kill each other. The king's heir. Oh, all of a sudden you like royalty, huh? It's the whole thing in the alliance. Listen, I'm not. I don't, I've never said the alliance is perfect. The Horde! Don't get me wrong. I l- seems more democratic than the Alliance, as a matter of fact. Well, not democratic. <laughs> not more, directly More democratic. anarchistic. Listen, if the Horde were never an issue, right? If there was no non-domestic problems to deal with, there's a lot of things going wrong with the, with the Alliance, too, with, the, with the, uh, the ruling situation. But here's the thing. All of those royalty or ruling folks in the Alliance have always, so far, been good ones. So there's nothing to complain about uh, in this in story. Actually, you know what I just uh, you know what I just thought of? Wait. 
you, we talked about how uh, you said a lot of the uh, non-horde enemies are neutral, right? Or outsiders. What do you mean non-horde? I, I'm mostly talking about the Burning League. Oh, yeah. Um, sure. First, they were summoned by the Night Elves. Who? Wait, the, the Burning Legion, oh, okay. like, uh, like demons. Like, mm-hmm. the, the first one was the Sundering. Like, when, All right. you know, the content is actually split apart. When the sun well, uh, the, the, the Well of Eternity became mm-hmm. whatever the fucking spiraling messes that is on the, the center. The, uh, the, 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 the Maelstrom? Yeah. Right. Uh, that's, that's because the Night Elves summoned demons. And then they fought yeah. them because the majority of Night Elves yeah. weren't actually evil. But, you know, they were the ones who caused that one. And then later, you ta- you said uh, you excused Medivh for uh, for being possessed. Who summoned Sargeras? Uh, who summoned Sargeras? Who summoned Sargeras? To which led to Medivh's corruption. Who summoned Sargeras? That's a good question, actually. There was Agewin, uh, the mother of Medivh, who, uh-huh. by the way, uh, is also human. Was there an alliance back then? Like, was there an alliance for the um, conflict? I'm not sure if it was the alliance or if it was the alliance of Lord. She summoned Sargeras on purpose to corrupt Medivh? I th- I mean, I think she did it. Tr- I think she summoned him into and then killed an avatar of him. And then she- I I think it was more of a mistake. Mm-hmm. Than, yeah. But uh, but the, the night elf summoning um, demons out of basically sheer arrogance and uh, regarding to magic um, is at the very least comparable to what you, uh, the grims that you have with the blood elves. Okay. So, uh, say we make, a, like, a political thing in real life, like, something like the European Union, but functional, right? Like, sensible. <laughs> um, or, like, the United States or whatever, right? But functional, yeah. Yeah, so, like, so let's, let's say, like, 500 years ago, like, some... Okay, let's just, let's just, for this experiment, just hypothetically assume the European Union was okay, like, was sensible and stuff, okay. right? Let's just assume it was a good thing. So, like, 500 years ago, a, a German guy, like, accidentally um, shot a French guy. Right, so uh, that happened. Let's just say that happened. Right? Yeah, that then, probably did happen. Yeah, and then and then um, you know that probably probably not sh- not shooting at five hundred years ago, but something. Like well, that. I mean, bow and arrow. I mean, it, maybe. It's, so say it's all say that happened. So like five hundred years later, the European Union forms, and it's hypothetically good, right? So is there European Union? Is there like a seed of European Union being bad because of that German guy back then? No, which is my point exactly. No, that's my point, because you were implying that you the alliance are... was bad because uh, certain tribes that very much later became part of the alliance did weird stuff. No, but because your point was that the horde was bad because individuals in the horde were bad. Like all of the individuals, not in the current horde, yes, too. And, all, and for some reason, they always take the ruling spots. I'm not denying that there's like some... Dude, living in, like, Northshire or something who's like, man, I, I don't like the Alliance that much. Like, some peasant and like, God knows what farm. But he's not going to be, like, a military official or a leader who's, who gets, like, millions and millions behind him to, to, to freaking, uh, I mean, the, run, run through Orgrimmar. You, you pointed and, out, like, the the, uh, the Burning Crusade and later the, the, the Scarlet Crusade. Is it Scarlet Crusade? Yeah. Scarlet, something like that. Um, is basically just... Um, Prosecution, uh, racially based prosecution against uh, undead and like murdering, systematic genocide. Are they, they alliance? They're basically Nazis. Are they alliance? Um, I think. I thought they were like mercs, like outlaws. Sort I of thing. think the Scar Crusade was later disavowed, but it's still made up primarily of alliance. Because I'm pretty races. sure that something like the uh, um, the um, the Silver Hand Knights or something would not be doing that that stuff. Uh, well, I mean, even to orcs. Uh, the Scar Crusade. Or uh, it's vernacular to sect that evolved from the Knights of the Silver Hand, dedicated to the uh, eradication of the undead from Lord Yeah. Um, they were later disavowed from the Alliance, but they're still made up primarily of yeah. Alliance. Are the undead not inherently bad and evil? They're not inherently bad or evil. No. Are they not? No. Are you sure about that? Yes. All right. Because I would have just said, you know, I vow myself to the eradication of mosquitoes from Africa. Technically, those are also not inherently bad. It just happens that when they interact with humans, it mm-hmm. generally doesn't go well for humans. Yeah. Um, but no, the, the undead aren't inherently bad. Yes, I agree that a lot of the undead characters that we know are bad. Uh, you had a good yeah, example there for the guy black who... Uh, Matthias yeah. Black Collar. Um, bad dude. But inherently, uh, the, for, the Forsaken, or the undead in general, 
Uh, well, if the intelligent undead, at the very least. Uh, mindless undead, different story. Yeah. They're very animalistic like and hungry sort of for human flesh, but um, they are all like humans and elves that just happen to have been dead once, mm-hmm. and their moral compass still remains the same as back when they were alive, with the added complication that people don't like them very much. Hmm. So that's the, the undead, but they're whores somehow. Well, yeah, because the Alliance didn't want them. That, that, no, how did they how did they came to be actually? Um well uh, through the, the Lich King. Uh right. The Lich King turned people the undead. The Lich King being like the central like force of evil. And then of. some of the undead were basically freed from the control of the Lich King, yeah. I think almost through chance, basically. And they then formed their own faction yeah. of intelligent uh undead. That would later, mm-hmm. I mean, that our general referred to as the Forsaken. And guess who is the, who type. became the leader of that group and later of the Horde? Uh, Sylvanas Windrunner. So uh, would it not have been better to eradicate those to avoid this situation? Hey, wouldn't it have been good to entire uh, to eradicate the entirety of Austria because Adolf Hitler would have been born eventually? <laughs> he might have been born somewhere else. Who knows? That's not how that works. <laughs> unless his parents fled elsewhere and. Uh huh. Um. I'm not sure if I can f- uh, pick up the history that fast. Well, I mean, there is in their history there is alliance with a um, split violently from the scourge, but the third blast, Sylvanas worked to ensure. I'm pretty sure I can't find this fast. See, enough. there's a blood collar in the 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 third the second picture that that's in. He's bad. He's uh, another good yes. guy. He's bad. Um, so let me. Oh, I'm gonna actually because we didn't Sylvanas talk about Sylvanas worked to ensure that the damned, such as herself, would have a home free from the threats by the living. As a means to further her own goals and protect her budding nation, Sylvanas sent emissaries to various factions in search of allies. The kind hearted Torn of Thunder Bluff proved to be the most promising contact. And then so on and so forth, they ended up joining the Horde because the Alliance didn't want them. No, the Horde? The, 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 the Torn? No, the undead. Oh, the undead. The, the, right. the torn at that time were already part oh, of the Oh, okay, so so for some reason, though, the uh, undead just happened to stumble into the one tribe of the Horde that's, like, acceptable hum- no, like humanitarian. It literally, it literally says Sylvanas contacted all sorts of factions, and those were the ones that were receptive. The the torn, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, I mean, that's that's to be expected, though, right? Like, because the orcs wouldn't be, for you, for example. Like, trolls seem to just be doing their... Knowing their that no human agency broken. would ever give them shelter or aid against the Scourge, now their hated enemy, they turned to the Horde. What do you mean aid against the Scourge? Like, they mainly fought the, fought the Scourge. Humans did. Well, yeah, but because... You know, because uh, undead were generally... Because the problem is, uh, humans in particular, when they saw someone being undead, they thought of the Scourge right away. Yeah. And didn't really distinguish between the... Uh, the one who brought blow. about by who? Uh, by the Lich King. Who uh, is who? At the time, Arthas. Um, he has a last name. I'm blanking like on that one right now. Uh, God damn. Sure, has a last name, right? I think so. But he was de- he was already Death Knight before that, right? Yes. Uh, which doesn't necessarily speak for him because so was Norzul. Arthas Menethil. Men- Men- you don't hear that much. You don't hear. Yeah, that you much don't hear that. But that's crazy. You really don't hear that much. So how about the current horde? The current horde, yes. Yeah, you are you pro current horde? I'm definitely not pro their political leadership. No. Are you pro current horde? Well, I guess in this case, no. Are you pro previous horde? Uh, yes. Which previous horde? Garrosh horde. Not necessarily, no. So, um, Vol'jin, Thrall, yes. We like Heck, Vol'jin. Uh, the, Vol'jin the, 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 didn't the, even enact anything. Like he wasn't even. No. He didn't even get to see. Like it's like but, saying I was pro James Garfield presidency. I don't know. But the thing is, right? Yes, Vol'jin didn't do much when he was the mm-hmm. leader of the war because he pretty much died immediately. Yeah. But he was one of the key figures in uh, the impeachment of Garrosh. You know, yeah. <laughs> impeachment is a very good word. <laughs> Guess who was also likable, according to you, before becoming the war chief? Um, I'm pretty sure I said I never liked Sylvanas that much, or what would I be getting? Yeah, yeah, Sylvanas. You just you said like a couple minutes ago. I, like, I said she didn't. You I, just I, read out a paragraph of how how many good things she did for the Forsaken. It was like, oh man, what a humanitarian. I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, she, also before that, she was a uh, uh, she was one of the uh, ranger. Wasn't Garros? Was ranger wasn't general. Garros just a, a humble warrior before he became? Wasn't he like, oh man, uh, I'm not even good enough? Like, didn't he talk to Thrall? Be like, oh, I'm, I'm not even good enough to rule the horde yet. I just I got to be so much better, you know, f- to be like a glorious leader and stuff. Yes, I think that happened. Yeah, before he became the war chief. So how do you know that Vol'jin would have been like the goat? Like he would have been like a really good guy and made peace with the lines and stuff. Well, I mean, the I think Garrosh was never very politically active before he became uh, the war chief. Sylvanas always had her flaws. Vol'jin never like seemed to be that bad of a guy in general. Like, I, I mean, he was he was always anti Garrosh, of course. He was always anti Garrosh. Yeah. Um, he was, I think, he was also one of the ones who was very much always rooting for uh, diplomatic connections with the alliance. Mm-hmm. Um. As a matter of fact, uh, him and Bane, of course, uh, at the time of Garrosh, were probably the biggest proponents thereof. Um, so, yeah. You know what's also what I noticed, by the way, as a side thing? Um, never once, when we talked about the politics of the Horde, did the goblins come up. Yeah, no, they can fuck off. Because goblins and gnomes just don't seem to matter Who much. gives a damn? They're small. Like, who, gives a, who gives a crap about goblins? Like, what goblin's gonna be like... Is a goblin gonna be nice war chief? What orc is gonna re- respect a goblin as war chief? Seriously. Well, I mean, that, that's the whole point of why Garrosh became the war chief, by the way. Yeah. Because Thrall, at the time, said the Horde isn't ready yet to accept a non-orc yeah. as war chief. Exactly. So Thrall was actually also... Because I, I'm pretty sure Thrall actually... Um, I think Thrall was aware... I think it was later said at some point. I'm not sure if it was in the game or mm-hmm. in the novelizations or whatever. But I think it was said that uh, Thrall thought that the only reason, or the main reason why Garrosh was the best candidate is because he was one that the, the orcs who made up the majority of yeah. the horde would respect the most. the son of Grom. Because, exactly. Um, and that, from a political standpoint, someone like Vol'jin or yeah. um, Karen at the time, because, you know, before Grom kill, uh, before Garrosh killed him, yeah. uh, would have been accidentally better candidates. That's fair. Uh, the blame for that one falls on the druid, uh, who was the torn, by the way, who enchanted his weapon. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I was it Hamul Rune Totem? Was it, it, was it, it wasn't Magatha, maybe? I don't know, I forget. Oh, it, it might have been Magatha. Yeah. It, 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 I forget, but yes, someone like that. Yeah. Wait, Magatha is... I'm not even, I'm not even sure. Magatha. Magatha Rune Totem. That sounds reasonable. Yeah, that might be. Uh, blah, 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 powerful shaman, kind of leader, uh, is the leader of the nation, it's fine, good, we'll come. Oh, yeah, 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 that yeah, was her. Yeah, that was her. Fair enough. I was thinking of someone else. I was just thinking of Torah names that came to mind that seemed yeah, important. Fair enough. So, but, but saying that the Horde, or the majority of the Horde isn't willing to accept someone like, not Garrosh, but someone like Vol'jin, just makes the argument that the majority of the Horde are bloodthirsty orc barbarians. The, not interested in peace. The argument there was not based on political view, but on racial bias, because the majority of the horde was orcs, mm-hmm. and they would not accept an outsider as leader. Which, granted, isn't the most positive thing, but... Um, Even Nazi Germany did it. Like, Hitler was literally Austrian. Even they were like, nah, man, we're not gonna vote for this Austrian kid. It's not going to happen. Go back to painting. Nope. No politics. Not even they. Not even they. That... Nope. Should I, should I make it on? That's a very skewed way of looking okay. at things because A, not, not even close to the majority of the German population at the time were necessarily yes. a strong believers in the Nazi ideals. It kind of that just followed correct. that a lot of them out of necessity and there's or another fear. argument to why the Horde is worse than the Nazis. And, um... <laughs> and... Uh, yes, Hitler was elected based on political stuff and mm-hmm. for the purpose of this, making the distinction between Austria and Germany is almost pedantic because very very shortly before then they were basically, I mean, they were at the very least close allies um, but, like, even before then they, they were they were never the same country really, but... Mm, yeah, um, no, not the way we know it today. Um, Germany as an entity, hadn't really existed... Well, I mean, they had existed for a while, but not, yeah. like... Uh, but, you know, there, there was... Before then, they were all small kingdoms, and the only... By the way, the only reason why Austria and Switzerland, uh, Austria specifically, isn't... Uh, aren't part of Germany is because 
then the capital would have likely been more f- further south, and someone in, like, Berlin was like, hey, uh, how about we become the capital, and just yeah. suggest to not include Austria, yeah. so that we can become the capital. Exactly. There, there's a whole... I learned that history class at one point. Interesting yeah, story. That, that is correct, yes. So, yeah, a uh, horde bad. Um, prove me wrong. I mean, w- what are they doing cur- currently? They're just, you know, uh, kidnapping the king's son, Killing the king, betraying the king on a mission that they had agreed to collaborate on. That horde, you can't tell me that that is being, that that is showing any interest in making peace with the alliance. This behavior. No. You can't tell me. Gero, Sylvanas, I think they're all the same. I think Sylvanas is on her way to just being just like Gerosh. Yeah. It's not far removed anymore. The the problem is. just the same. The problem is that for a long time, the horde was led by Thrall. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he was the one who basically founded the current iteration yeah. of the Horde. Yes, the Orcish Horde as an entity, <laughs> with uh, including all Orcish tribes and a couple of ogres, mm-hmm. existed before. Uh, but Thrall was really the one who founded the current iteration of the Horde. Just like saying that the Alliance of Lordran existed before the current yeah. Alliance. As a matter of fact, those were the factions in the First War. But, you know. Um, and under Thrall, the Horde was not that bad. But they existed. Why was well, yes, they existed. Why, why was he not good enough to make peace with the Alliance and join them? Why, why did he... If he was so great, why did he still have to be a horde? If he was such a good war chief or such a good leader, he should have should have made the horde obsolete by being such a good guy. I think that's a dumb argument. So he wasn't... No, I mean, he wasn't that good now, was he? That's, that's like saying, oh, uh... Any given, like, say, president of the U.S. wasn't very good since there is not just one world nation anymore. That's like well, that's co- that's talking about conquering. I'm talking about joining or like or making peace with, like, the optimal. But you can have optimal... your own. F- you can have your own faction peacefully coexist with another faction, which is what they did the, for a long time, for a decent amount of time under Thrall. The optimal leader of South and North Korea would be ones that make peace with each other. Yes. And not not divide. But. Even if they made peace, that doesn't necessarily mean that they would become one country again. Because they were divided a long time ago from one country, yes. But North Korea didn't hop in into half of South Korea out of space, being corrupted by demon stuff, and, and were like, I'm going to keep this. If you're a good war chief as Thrall, you get the F out of Azeroth. Because, man, it ain't, none, it ain't none of your business being there to begin with. Everyone, Everything was good. We had peace. We had humans hanging out. You know, it was all good. And then they showed up. And, like, that's, like, that's like you notice how that's, like, the whole conflict? How, like, all, like, almost all conflict we deal with started with the Horde just invading Azeroth? A planet they had no business on? So, I think what you're saying is that if you go into someone else's territory, you should just go back home. So, you're, I think what I'm, what I'm getting here is that you're very anti-immigration. Immigration? <laughs> if, I, if I immigrated over the border with an assault rifle and was like, this is my territory now, then hell yeah, I'm expecting him no, to, no, no, to no. show me right back. No, no, no. Your grandfather ah. showed up with an assault rifle okay, and immigrated. Okay, okay, okay. Then he and his kids were captured. Okay. And you were born in a fucking concentration camp. Okay. And that is who you are in that scenario. That, that is who I am in that scenario, right? So why did because my grandfather Thrall, do this? Wasn't shit? Thrall literally born in captivity? No, no, wait, no. I think it was. Uh, I think it was captured no. as a young child, but. Yeah, something like that. He was corrupted and, and that's... Well, he, he wasn't personally corrupted. He just... Uh, he was descended of corrupted orcs. Right, right, right. That's... Some, something like that happened, yeah. Maybe his mother got corrupted or something. I, I forget. Uh, his, but his, he also... His parents got corrupted. His father definitely was because yeah, he was yeah. one of the warriors. Uh, was it... Was it Dorotar? Well, isn't Might Dorotar uh, Thrall's father? Or am Might I mistaken? Have, was, maybe Dorotar was the guy who raised him. I don't know. Something yeah. There, there was there was something like that, yeah. Well, then, uh, why? First of all, if my grandfather invaded here. Why the hell am I still here? Because you were in a freaking concentration camp. So, so, by so, the humans. so, so the alliance right now is forcing the horde to stay on Azeroth. Not anymore. Okay. So why didn't I leave? Because their planet was fucking ripped apart and all sorts of shit. Like, have you been to, uh, <laughs> to, uh... Have you been to Adler? No, uh, it's officially was. I have not been to Adler. <laughs> exactly. I, I, There's I, still folks hanging around like, Outland these days. Yeah. Yeah. And but, if, like, if they if, went to Outland yeah. now, 
then they would still be okay. outsiders coming okay, in. Okay, so then the least the Horde could do would be to make peace with the Alliance and follow goddamn Alliance rules. Also, most of the races in the Horde are native to Azeroth. As a matter of fact, just as many Horde races are native to Azeroth as there are Alliance races, because both have exactly one big faction of outsiders, which is the Draenei yeah, and the Orcs. The Orcs. And the orcs are the, the leadership ones. If I came to your house, which I am right now, I don't impose my house rules of behavior on you. I follow your house rules. If like if I if I don't leave, like if I have to stay here and and I'm not just fucking off, I'm at least following your house rules. I'm not gonna be staying off here. I'm not gonna divide this room in two and then launch attacks on you and stuff and assassinate your king. <laughs> I don't do that. For some reason, the moment you said divide this room in two, I was just thinking of Berlin. I don't know why. <laughs> Basically, right? Like, I don't do that. So how can you declare yourself a supporter of the Horde and look at what's cur- what the Horde is currently doing? How can you not look at this and say, you know what, this is not right? I, I never said that everything the Horde does is okay. I'm, I've also never said that, anything, that everything the Alliance does is okay. It's just, as I said... Both of those factions are compromise of good and evil. There's a centrist again. And I just happen to like the good that is in the Horde. You know, I hate centrists, like, even more than right-wingers. You know that, right? <laughs> like, because that's the stupidity of saying you can make a compromise with it. It's sort of like the same with Horde and Alliance, really. Like, uh, the Horde is like, let's do horrible genocide. And then the Alliance is like, let's not do that. And then JJ is like, nah, man, y'all are both being radical. We need, we need to find a compromise between you. Like, that's sort of what's going on here. That's why I don't like centrists. I I don't like centrists, man. That's why. Do you see what I'm... Do you see where I'm coming from? Like, do you see that? Do you get it? I never understood the whole dislike for centrism because it seems like a reasonable position. No, no. But... <laughs> like, in IRL politics or in this one? I mean, in general... We okay. The IRL politics stuff. We're gonna we're gonna debate that in off the air because I'm not gonna do that. The, the on, problem is the problem is that IRL politics is fucked beyond belief in any dimension. Really. Yeah, we're not gonna talk about that on the air. But yeah, um, how is okay? So if there's like okay, hypothetically, right? And I know that is no neither side is perfect, but say there's an absolute good and absolute bad, right? And and are you really gonna sit there and be like, we gotta find a compromise between those two? No. All right, so Baron is not perfect. But you are saying that the alliance is absolute good. No, 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 no. Hypothetically, hypothetically, that was the in the hypothetical. I'm not saying that either one's fully good, fully bad. I'm saying the alliance is approaching absolute good, not there, approaching, tending towards it, way closer to it the horde. And the horde, same thing for absolute bad. Like, say, if we had a spectrum from from uh, say negative 100 to 100. And 100 is absolute good, negative 100 is absolute bad. The horde is like 9, negative 90, and the alliance is like 80 or something. Like positive 80. Or 75 or whatever. First of all, I would argue that the alliance would be closer to absolute good than the horde would be to absolute evil for sure. You think so? Second of all. I don't know. Uh, I would argue that on, on that scale, the horde would be around a zero. A zero? Maybe, maybe, maybe like a slight positive number, but... Uh, and the alliance would probably, I mean, yeah, the problem is it's uh, it's hard to judge the alliance because you have to take kind of the world into context. Because uh, in a real world scenario, they wouldn't be much better because you know the whole like monarchy stuff and everything. Like that, but it works for them, so uh, I, I would a, put them at like it's a seventy a or good something. Good guy monarchy, like the king happens to be a good. Like, the, that doesn't justify the system. I get it, but that's a domestic policy. Like, yes, we don't run into like as the alliance. We don't just run into places and take hostages and kill and sl- and slaughter families and dispense the freaking plague, as the horde does. I mean, again, I've, I've mentioned culture Ross earlier. Uh, they did a lot of that stuff, didn't uh, the alliance? More than the alliance one also dropped the nuke. What? Well, the, the the like mana bomb or whatever it was, like what mana was it also. Was well, there something like that that happened as well? I don't, know. I don't know exactly what you mean. I mean, there was a whole conflict in, I think it was Warcraft 2 or 3, which was about uh, Kul Tiras being a, a sub-faction of the humans doing a lot of bad shit. Because they, they Having split from the Alliance. Though Kul Tiras is, I think, independent. 
Are they now? Okay. I'm pretty sure they are. Because in Battle for Azeroth, it takes place in Kul Taras. With both factions fighting for stuff. And I think the Kul Tiran humans just didn't want to hang out with bloodthirsty, cannibal, primitive, freaking insane uh, trolls. But that's neither here nor there. They're, if they're not, if they're not, if they're not, if they are committing atrocities not under the alliance banner, it's not mine to defend in this case. I've seen plenty of horde zeppelins drop the plague and drop bombs and invade Pandaria and stuff. I haven't seen it much for the for the alliance. When I see the alliance, I usually see troops marching on ice ground trying to like dispense justice and stuff. I see I see um, troops. Uh, trying to defeat some kind of collective evil and then I see the horde show up and stab them in the back. That's how that's what I've seen so far. That's usually how it goes. I think what this boils down to is the fact that if a group and, and this once again of course is caused by the meta, but that's normal of course. Uh is that the bad that the alliance associated bad guys disassociate themselves first before they commit the bad acts. While As the poor associated ones don't. As they should. Because we don't want... If, if you're going to do that, you're not going to be part of the alliance. That's, that's just very simple. The thing is, it seems that the Horde just takes more time to figure their shit out whenever that happens. Because at the end of the day, the Horde did turn against Garrosh. Oh, yeah. They did uh, turn against the whole dispensing the plague thing. Uh, at least are, when they are did... Are still in the process. At, at least when they did it the first time. But, <laughs> you know, like... At the end of the day, the horde usually turns against the bad guys within their own faction. But how come these just guys to always rise to power? Like, how does that happen? Doesn't I don't that, isn't know. that an indication of a broken system at all? Like, isn't that kind of you know? Yes, that is fair enough. Uh, there is seems to be some systematic. Like, flaw. how much betrayal is going on? Like, wh- this is true, by the way, in World of Warcraft. Whenever you get a horde cutscene, it's like. People are uh, fighting against each other. People are assassinating each other, betraying each other. Um, Sylvanas and Garrosh talking. Then, then these guys. It's always like it's always tension, and you can tell there's con- there's in- inter sort of conflict. Whenever there's an alliance cutscene, it's everyone standing around the table planning stuff. Like we should do this and this. High honored Mister Vellum dude. Uh, yes, Lady Proud, more sort of thing. That that is how the alliance cuts. Well, um, I. I'm pretty sure there was a lot of conflict between, uh, at the very least, uh, the Worgen and the rest of the Alliance for a while. Yeah, in the beginning, because they had the Worgen curse. Um, so there is definitely built-in conflict. There was also, uh, I think there was stuff where like the Worgen didn't contribute troops to conflicts that were helped pop by the Alliance. Oh, King and... always shows up, like these days. Also, need I remind you that the Worgen have other stuff, like the Worgen, which are by the way also humans, have some other stuff to deal with. With their entire city being destroyed and invaded by Yesu? My point was that you said that there is very little internal conflict, and I said there might be less, but there definitely there definitely exists as well. Um, I'm gonna say it like this, right? The Alliance has an internal structure of the Patriots, and the Horde like the Browns. <laughs> And then, and then, that's actually a perfect analogy because then that missing structure leads to the horde outwardly knocking people over the head with their helmets. <laughs> that's actually oh, perfect. That's God. actually that's actually perfect. The Browns <laughs> are the horde, and the Patriots are the Alliance. Except that I don't really root for the Patriots, but like that's perfect. Actually, that's like exactly how it works. <laughs> that, that's that's the, that's that's basically the closing analogy, I think. Um, as for who will be the next war chief, I don't I got no idea. I hope it's going to be someone like I hope. I hope Is someone still alive, huh? Sourfang, the, the, sure. the guy with the huge metal jaw. Not sure. I hope it's going to be Fang. someone that you think could could make it happen. Um, either because there's two good outcomes there. Basically, like say it was someone like Bane or, yeah. or someone you like. So either he's actually gonna be cool and make peace and not and not be horde horde anymore or they're gonna die because that's like the two or, things that happen or he's cool also gonna turn bad like Sylvanas and Garrosh did and become an asshole again which should at least teach you a lesson see the two war chiefs I liked were Thrall and Vol'jin yeah. one of them left to do shaman things mm-hmm. and the other one was killed didn't he go back to Outland or something 
to do some things. Yeah. Yeah. Why couldn't he took the horde with him? <sighs> oh god, I, don't know. I think I think actually the the reason he went wasn't that to like with the Earthen Ring to like restabilize yeah. Outland so- or something, something, yeah, yeah, something, which would then in turn maybe make it more habitable, so they could actually move back. I don't. Know. I wouldn't mind a torn actually. I wouldn't mind a torn because like we haven't seen much Earth Murder stuff anyway. Um, that's usually like the elemental lord we haven't seen much. Yep. And uh, there's Vane. Exactly, and like that's what Vane talks about too. Like, uh, like he obviously they very clearly turned against Gerush, and and Vane is also sort of the leading character in in Battle for Azeroth, who's turning against Sylvanas now. I'm actually kind of disappointed, by the way. Speaking of uh, like leadership changes, that Anduin just by default became the leader of the alliance. That seems... well, he's the son of the king. Well, yeah, but. Like the whole like oh yeah the leader of the humans is automatically the leader of yeah. the alliance sort of thing it's like but that's, that's I, I, that... I wouldn't have minded seeing like Malfurion or Gen yeah but they'll all those understand how it works and Valen treat... Valen is the goat and they treat each other with a lot of respect and they they work together and that sort of excludes all the the drama that the horde's got going on internally the whole time with ah oh, man it's not an orc nah we can't have that ah oh, man the forsaken nah nah we can't have that sort of thing, right? Like, if it was just... Um, if, if it had just been strictly Garrosh and then the guy he appointed after that, it would have... I mean, it still would have been evil, but at least it would have been a more stable regime sort of thing. And if you can do that and still be the good side, that's that's momentous. That doesn't happen much. Because I've never seen um, any fact really falling apart with the Alliance. Like, it's always like, okay, they might have a disagreement. Like, Raymond might be like, oh, that's... Let's 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 uh, pursue them like when Sylvanas just escaped or something. Let's go after him, and then Jaina's like, "Now, nah, man, we got to get home or something." Um, but like major disagreements hasn't hasn't happened that much. The biggest one that I can imagine is when Anduin told Tirana that we can't help but tell Drusil right now because we got stuff to do. And then you got the quest chain where you save Teldrassil, and you actually confront Nathanos by collar and escapes because he's a prick. Yeah. Yeah, it's that. It's also about for Azeroth. But yeah, I wouldn't mind a Torn. I, w- I wouldn't mind one of the guys that you think are good. Yeah. Because either way, it probably should be good. Outcome. I think I think Saurfang would also work if he's still alive. I'm not sure if mm. he is. Uh, but he's he's kind of a lot like Gen in a lot of aspects. Yeah. Where he's like the grizzled veteran oh, sort of Gen guy. Is the, Gen is great. I where, like Gen. He might be my favorite. Well, well more, more like more like old school Gen, not like... What, like old school Gen? Well, I mean, Gen became a lot more like chill over time, I feel. Yeah, a bit. But Gen is cool though. He's he might be like my favorite faction leader aside from or together with maybe Valon, because Valon is generally just the best. Like he's hmm, Valon got it. He's powerful, man. I I would say that my faction my favorite faction leader was uh, Vol'jin, but you know huh. that who the f- leads the Dark Spear trolls anyways these days. I don't know. Also, by the way, uh, speaking of like you you mentioned like bad trolls and yeah. stuff like that. Notice how the out of all the troll factions. The one that is arguably most palatable is the one that joined the Horde, right? I think other troll factions joined them at some point as well, but, like, the Darkspear trolls are, like, the the Horde trolls, right? And the those are, like, trolls. the most... Like, then you have, like, the Zandalari and stuff who, who aren't, I think. I think there's another uh, tro- uh, troll tribe at some point who joined because they what? have, like, allied races and stuff now in, in uh, uh, Warcraft. But, um... Amani? I mean, yeah, um, Amani and Zandalari, are, I think they are, like, the basically the bigger categories, yeah. but I think then it still splits oh, after yeah. that. Oh. Um, I, the trolls, by the way, are Jamaican. Like, they are just Jamaican. No, they're Jamaican. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're not Jamaican. They are for real. Like, all their stuff, the way they speak, mm-hmm. everything they have. I mean, they that's are, not coincidental. They're Jamaican. They're, they're completely Jamaican. I like it. I have an Amani Warbear mount in World of Warcraft now. <laughs> I had to play Zulaman Dungeon uh, to, to get it, but I finally got it. It's great. Can't fly, though. It's unfortunate. Why would it be able to fly? A horse can fly. It's a horse. Fair enough. Yeah. Also, there's magic and stuff. Like, I'm sure someone can make a bear fly. I mean, at that point, why don't it just make you fly, right? <sighs> um, yeah, certain certain classes can do it. Like, Groot and Demon Hunter to a degree. You can glide. Dude, Demon Hunter, I think, is my favorite class. At least I'm, from, like, a flame I'm, pl- I'm, I'm leveling a Demon Hunter right now because I want to get one to 120 because they're, like, one of the fastest, so I'm going to use that to farm gold. Yeah, and I, I, I can't talk about gameplay barely at all because I yeah. ne- haven't played WoW much. I'm not you, also don't have, you don't have access to Demon Hunter yeah. until you hit that level. But, um, like, from a, like, from a, like, a flavor mm-hmm. and lore standpoint, like, the Demon Hunters are... They are pretty cool. Probably because I like Illidan. Yeah. 
Which, you know, we talked about, we both like Illidan. Illidan shows up in that, in that uh, starting zone. Obviously. He's the goat. I, I find it interesting how they basically were like, we can't just make them all night elves. I guess he's he's allied with Kalthus, just give it to Blood Elves as well. Yeah. And then he just had Blood Elf Demon Hunters Man, introduced as well. Demon Hunters are uh, are cool. That's true. I'm 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 playing a bit more. It's t- it's uh, a bit different, obviously, like ca- kind of tough to handle. But it, uh, I'm, I'm getting there. It's fun. Um, I also want to do Death Knight at some point, but that's like very different because that's close. It's it seems like sort of like a mixture between Mage and Warrior, which is so counterintuitive. I mean, design wise, definitely. I'm not sure how they handle. I don't know. <laughs> tough i haven't played much with it that but i will at some point but uh, i think we're done man i think yeah. this is enough we can go back to this stuff if we want to there seems to be a lot of talking potential um before we are out here we have a song of the week we do we have a song of the week so uh jj uh what is your song? stop me for this one before i mean you have because uh, i hi. because you know the whole thing about sharing music All right. uh it is one that i actually rediscovered this year this year 2020 uh, so it's on the list. It's 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 eligible. Cool. Um, and it's Suburbia by the Pet Shop Boys. That's my favorite song by that band. Uh. It might be for me as well. Yeah. I don't know. West End Girls is pretty good. Doesn't compete. Good, but doesn't. Uh, not even close. There's, there's, not, there's a couple other ones, but... Yeah. Uh, Suburbia is pretty good. Yeah, um, it's the best. I recently heard it, I think, on the radio or something, and I was like, it's this actually, song exists! Yeah, it's actually... F- fun fact, right? It's uh, I'm not sure if you experienced this phenomenon, but you put in the music share, and like I just saw it in there, and I didn't even have to listen to it. I knew exactly what it was. I know exactly how it went, and I knew yeah, the exact song. Yeah, th- that happens to me sometimes. I yeah. didn't have it in my playlist, and, then, and only seeing it again reminded me of the fact that I didn't have it. Okay. Because when you usually like you subconsciously think like this is easily good enough to be I should in the place I should have. No, for me for me have, usually it I is I, I'm usually aware of whether or not I have a song. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'll see it and I'm like Oh my god, this exists, why yeah. don't I have yeah, this? Yeah, that's that that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what yeah. happened. Um like I always knew the song all over the time that I didn't have it. And I, I always knew how it goes and I always knew I didn't have it, but all of this happens less for me lately because I do some of this music on YouTube yeah. and that you'll see all the recommended mm-hmm. stuff and because it's, it. you know, and usually that's how I rediscovered a lot of those kind yeah, of songs. That's true. And so that doesn't happen as much anymore because the ones that do shop love and recommend it, I already got. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so uh, I would also want to use a song that I discovered in, in, in 2020. Um, I kind of threw one away in the beginning of the, even before the podcast when I mentioned it to you. I can't, You kind of threw Suburbia away from me now. And uh, other than that, I've <laughs> I don't want to go back to rap either because there there is a bunch of those too. Um, so it's 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 kind of it's kind of thinner. So actually, I have to improvise now um, because my it was originally gonna be Maxwell Silver Hammer by the Beatles, and then I brought it up to you before the which the, the doesn't have this qualify. Yeah. But... And then I was thinking I might just use Suburbia, but now now you went went on ahead. I mean, to be fair, I'm kind of predictable. Oftentimes, yeah. if I if I share a song with you. It's going to be like my song of the yeah, week next week or true. something. So I'm going to be predictable also. I'm just going to go with Learn to Fly by the Foo Fighters. It's actually, it's, it's a pretty good one. It's, a one it's that my I, second favorite Foo Fighters song, believe it or not. It might be my favorite, man. I'm not sure. I haven't had either one long enough, but it might be my favorite. Um, it's one that I didn't know existed before, and I didn't know before you before I saw my music show, but it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I think there's like three Foo Fighters songs that are reasonably popular. I two right now? What's the other? What's the third uh, one? Let's see. I'm, I'm just going to Google them. And, um, this Pretender, right? Yeah, The Pretender, which is my favorite by far. Uh, far. Well, reasonably far. In order to fly ever long, right? Ever long. I haven't heard of that. I don't like it as much as the other two. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can listen to it later after this. Um... I like learn uh, something that Learn to Fly actually has has a, the music video is great. <laughs> it's it's really funny because it, the one guy is yeah, playing yeah. like everyone. I think his name is yes. Dave Grohl. It's Dave Grohl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you know uh, which band he was in before? What was he in? He was the drummer of Nirvana. Oh, so that's why I know him, yeah. Because I've, I've seen him give interviews before about, like, Kurt and stuff. 
and how Nirvana worked. Yeah, right, right. I've, I've heard... And yes, he's the singer mm. of the Foo Fighters. I've heard that storyline. I've heard that storyline. Um, yeah, right. I've, I've heard that. Um, it's also, yeah, by the way, uh, in the music there's a song. huge difference. Uh, look, seeing that video versus the Pretender one, uh, which are like eight years apart. Yeah. And just like Dave Grohl and that yeah, video and then the sure. other one. Like, for sure. But I, I like the music video too. That's always bonus yeah. points. I like that. I like that a lot. It's I was fun. I was considering like some Al Yankovic stuff to pull out right now, but then I thought like we have this one, so I'm, I'm gonna go with that. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um guarantee that I'm never gonna bring up Weird Al, uh, <laughs> if if I don't funny guy anything else. He is funny. Uh, recently saw he has a parody of of ba- of Michael Jackson's Bad, which is called Fat. Oh, I knew that he had his parody of Beat It, which is called Eat, Eat It. it. Yeah. But <laughs> Very so closely linked. It's great. I was about to say, apparently there's, there's that. Yeah, huh. it's, it's good, good dude. Maybe um, he just always sings of food when he hears Michael Jackson songs. I don't know. Perhaps. I'm, 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 I'm not even sure what that insinuates, but I probably insinuate I'm not something. Sure, I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, thank you for watching this video. Drop a like on it if you did enjoy it. Um, by the way, if we can and it's possible and doable, we'll have the snippets of both our songs uh, playing when they... Which you would have already heard when we mentioned them. Sure. We'll try it. If it doesn't work, you'll have to uh, cut over it and uh, just, you know. But uh, hopefully we can do that. We had some of the in the top 25 that we were unable to put. Most of them we did put. Yeah, I used the YouTube cutting thing yeah. to cut them out so it's not that smooth, but it works for yeah. the most part. A couple of them do work. Um, most of them work, but if we ever have one with like the songs of the week Dude, that we can play, uh, then we can't play it. The Down Easter Alexa, right? Yeah. Was the only one that I cut out that wasn't blocked internationally. Okay. Because it was blocked in virtually every country besides the only one that I noticed that it wasn't blocked in is the US. That would have been a big, big thing, actually. Granted, large but chunk still, of our audience, yeah, but still on like a third still, of yeah, everyone no, or something. That's, that's weird. Like, it was, I, I read through the list, right? It's blocked like 140 some countries. And then there's still a couple of countries that don't even have YouTube. Why, would you you know? block, why did you block such a wonderful song? It right? is available in the US, right. except the Virgin Islands. <laughs> because okay. those are a separate territory. Uh, yes, that is those correct. Those are separately in the. In is the it US. available uh, on Guam? I'm not sure. Puerto Rico? I don't remember the exact details. Easter Island. Like, I don't think it was on Easter Islands, uh, uh, but like I read the I read through the entire list like, yeah. because it d- doesn't give you a list of of countries that are available. It gives you a list of countries that are yeah, available. Yeah, even though that's sometimes dumb. And then you can actually in the new YouTube Studio, which by the way I'm kind of getting around to now. Uh, they have a list of like um, basically like the top countries yeah. uh, of people that watch your videos, and then like available, not available, kind of list oh, next okay. to them. I think it's the top three. Yeah. And it just showed yeah, that, that like, makes US sense. was available, which I noticed. But yeah, we'll try to, for Songs of the Week, have a snippet. Yes. We'll put them in. If uh, they are blocked upon uploading, JJ will have to cut them out. Then you'll know. Yes. Happens. But we'll try to make it happen. So, thank you for watching. I already started doing the outro. Drop a like, subscribe, leave us a comment, and join the Discord server. Link to that in the description. By the way, Trash Bowl starts soon. Give me a hype. Give me a Trash Bowl hype in the, um, in the comment section. Give me Trash Bowl hype so we know what you watch to the end. But until next time, JJ. That's it. That's it.